This is Alma the Song. Eric Newman. Eric Newman. This is Ernesto Perez Carrillo. Hi, this is Glenn Case. Nick Perdomo. Nicholas Perdomo Jr. This is Jerry from Ben and Jerry's. Island. This is Jim Young from Davidoff of Geneva. This <laughs> is the Cigar Authority. <laughs> the authority. Are you saying pal? On everything cigar. <laughs> in. I get it. And out of the cigar industry. I know what it entails, and I'm ready to nail it. With your host. You know, you're, you're funny. <laughs> David Garofalo. I'm funny how? Like I'm a clown? I amuse you? What the f***? so funny about me. Tell me. Mr. Jonathan. Damn it. Who typed a question mark on the teleprompter? For the last time, anything you put on that prompter, Burgundy will read. Barry Stump. Sportos, motor hits, geeks, bloods, wasteoids. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. And Chuck Morrison. I am 35 years old, and I live in a van down by the river. It's time to light him up. <laughs> it's time Give me love, guy. for the Cigar Authority. Yeah. Light him up, light him up, light him up, everybody. Saturday, September 26, 2015, broadcasting live from the Lafleur Dominicana Cigar Studios. And this week, almost six years ago, a man walked into my office and offered me a very special cigar for my 25th anniversary. It was sold for $100 per cigar. It got tremendous acclaim, and those who smoked it uh, will never um, forget it. And uh, we didn't tell you anything about it, but today we will reveal to you who made it, the story behind it, and why finally I will reveal it. And uh, also give my thanks at the same time for that person for doing it. Also, the Cigar Journal has just awarded the trophies for 2015, the best cigar brands and the best cigars of 2015. Uh, we have the results. Welcome, everybody, to The Cigar Authority. You are listening to The Cigar Authority, the only radio show in the U.S. and, yes, the world that is always broadcast on location. And we are the only show that doesn't just allow that this cigar, since at one point it did sell for $100, that this cigar has now paid for the last two care packages and the next two care packages, including the care package that it comes in. Along with the shipping and the four cigars. It's crazy. There's no doubt it's an unbelievable deal, but you're not going to get cigars like this every time. There's no doubt. But this is the one that's in there right now. And uh, the, as I say, the care package is going out on Monday at 3 in the afternoon. If we don't have your order in by Monday at 3 in the afternoon Eastern time, if you order, you'll get the care package for the next November. Yeah. But the October one goes out this Monday, and that's it. It doesn't go out any other time. It only goes out one time a year. So last stop call. Stop begging. Stop crying. None yeah, of that works. Get in on the next one. And the people that are already in are automatically in. You're mm. in every single month. You're going to get it. And every single month, we're going to charge you the $19.99 and, uh, for cigars, including shipping, until you say stop. And you can say stop at any time. Anytime. No one's ever said stop so far. Actually, one person. Really? Yes. Uh, he lost his job and he needed to cut back expenses. Wow. He could sell the four cigars and get Jeez. more of his money he could, back. He could, right? he could make Turn a, a, a business. mini business out yeah. of that. He was limiting, in his words, all of his monthly bills. All right. That's do what you have smart. to do. But certainly you can, you can do it if you want. And uh, someday we're going to say stop. We're going to say we can't take any more people because how many cigars? we got about 200 or so people on board, and we thank you for it because uh, we were asked. We were asked by enough people that said we want to smoke the cigars along the way with you. 
And sometimes there's a guy in the middle of the country somewhere that can't get that oddball cigar or whatever it is. Certainly nobody can get this cigar. How can we smoke the cigar along with you? So we put it together. We'll see how long we end up keeping it. But listen, obviously, I'm a businessman. This is not a money-making endeavor for us. We're, we're just trying no. to make it so that you enjoy the show even more as you're smoking the cigars along with us. So, as if that's possible. Participation. Right. Pass those cigars out, Mr. Jonathan. And this is the cigar. Um, it is. It says 1985, 2010. 10. 1985, 2010. So that's you had to switch your contact there, didn't you? I, I got a problem with <laughs> I can't see very well today. Uh, two guys, 20. 25th anniversary, um, and what does it say underneath that? I really Smoke can't. shop? Silver anniversary. Silver, yeah, yeah, yeah. Silver, Silver. anniversary, because it was the 25th anniversary, mm -hmm. and uh, we did something uh, truly unique. We threw a big party, we, uh, which we do every year, and our, our next one is coming up this Wednesday. But that party, we gave a Rolls Royce away, the Silver so Spur. Silver Spur. Spur. Virgin in every way. Here we go. Mm -hmm. And, was that uh, the one that was virgin in every way? No. No, no, no. That was the Cadillac. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Fleetwood. Thank you. That was yeah, virgin was in all, every way. Because it was all original. I believe that was all original, too, though. But it was white. Uh, Classy. Silver yeah, spur. Silver spur. And inside the trunk, we minted. Dead bodies. 250 silver bars, four-ounce silver bars. And with that, with the Rolls Royce, came the 250 silver bars. <laughs> Um, and we gave it away. And the weird thing is that the guy that won it, I've never seen him since. What does it take <laughs> to, to get kiss it? Yeah, <laughs> but he has it, and he kept it. He didn't um, because people have seen him uh, at other things. Yeah, uh, but I haven't. Um, if you're listening, what's it going to take yeah. to get you to come in? He's not listening. Um, you actually little, gave me one of those silver bars last year for Christmas, yes. among something else. But it's yeah, VD. very nice. VD. Yeah. And all the yeah, different manufacturers that were involved in the anniversary party, which mm -hmm. there were 25 different manufacturers, their logos were minted on the back side of it. And the two guys' logo, like, like a dollar bill type of look to it, uh, was minted on the front of it. And also for the manufacturers, uh, as a surprise to them, we made up a comic book. So I have the comic book in my hand, and this is a 36-page comic book that I had an um, artist actually make for us and it's the fabulous first issue of two guys smoke shop october 2010 the adventures of two guys quest for the best cigar and um this was on every table and every manufacturer that participated in the event had a cartoon of themselves and it was uh the two guys going up to the manufacturers asking them to make this special cigar and as you read along to it, um, you'll see each manufacturer and us asking them, and for one reason or another, they tell us, no, they can't do it, or um, um, throw us out of their building, and one person actually beats us up, and lots of crazy stuff come along the way. And at the end, at the very end of it, I'm inside my office, and I walk in, and there's a person inside there, and it's a shadowed person. Uh, you can't see who it is. And they say, I heard you're looking for the perfect cigar for your 25th anniversary. What do you think of these? And I say, they're perfect. Um, so uh, what would we have to do to get this? And he says, I have a couple of stipulations. One is that you have to sell the cigar for $100 a piece. And the second is you can't tell anybody I'm the one that made it. So we agree to it, and we put the cigar out, and you buy two cigars, and it comes with a silver bar. So that's what we gave as a free gift, and the silver bar was worth a lot of money yeah. anyway. Um, so that's how the cigar was sold, and the cigar was only sold once. The people that bought it, they bought it, and that was it. It was even, even actually a cigar. I don't believe that the people at the anniversary party got the cigar. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure they did they get did? it. They did? Okay, they got they it. They did get it. Okay. So uh, here it is five years later, and uh, today I'm going to reveal uh, who actually did it and why that stipulation was there. But what I will tell you is if you have that comic book, the man in the comic book, in the shadowed figure, is not in the rest of the comic book because he did not participate in the anniversary party. That was a big ah, part of what it was. There's a clue. There, there's a clue. So we'll start off with that. Now, so, before you cut, yeah. this is for the Cigar Authority Care Package recipients. If you notice... The cigar is now old enough that the band is a little bit loose. It slides. Yeah. 
Now, this cigar had, had cellophane on it, yeah, which means that they would have had to glue the band to the wrapper to get the cigar to sit, the band to sit in the same spot on every cigar. But now it's old enough, the cigar is shrunk enough to have loosened that glue yeah, it's on been its a, own. It's been in perfect humidity all this time, but it shrinks, and um, this, this is an aged cigar, uh, no doubt. Looking at it, it is 6.5 inches by 49 um, it is from Nicaragua. There's a hint for you. There's mm -hmm. a second hint for you. It's a Nicaraguan cigar, uh, but here's a, here's a uh, basically six-year aged. I know it's five years ago, but the guy had to make it, and we had to sit, and it had to be ready by the time it was there anyway, using the aged tobacco to begin with. Uh, it was a very special cigar. We wanted something really good, but there's a reason behind it, as I said. Right now, it's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting is brought to you by our friends at Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is a brand that was at our 25th anniversary. They actually never met, missed one of our anniversary parties. Thank you, Nick Perdomo and his family. Uh, his wife comes up to it each time and every time, so he is not one. But Perdomo is the brand that while all other cigar brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually Everybody in them. the studio audience does that now. Yes. It's terrific. terrific. And I wonder if they're doing it at home. Did you do that at home? Did you click on I said that? I, I'll tell you this. I got a Facebook <laughs> message that said, uh, uh, and also I, I had a conversation with John McGuire, a big fan of the show, and he said that last week when I said, you guys are all nodding with Chuck's Gentleman's Way, he said, you caught me. I was nodding. <laughs> Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. And we broke up your commercial, Nick, a bit, but anyway, uh, you got more out of it. Speaking of excellence, we're going to light our cigar with the very excellent Vertigo Cyclone 2. Before we light it, let us, let's actually taste it, because you're talking about a yeah. five-year-old cigar that's made in Nicaragua. Six-year-old. Right. Yeah. It's clean. Yeah. It's, uh, I, sometimes I, I smell raisiny. I taste raisiny this time. Definitely. Definitely. 100%. Yeah, it's good. There's some sweetness in there. Nothing like a good age cigar. The wrapper smells like chocolate. And it's kind of dark looking. Yeah. A little bit. Yep. All right, what are we using here? We're using the Vertigo Cyclone 2. It's $14.99. It does, in fact, feature triple jets, the big ass tank, and the new patented, <laughs> new patented. big ass adjustment wheel yes, it does. at the bottom. These folks at Vertigo are all about inexpensive, high-quality lighters that feature big-ass amenities. So any of our friends here ever go to uh, Santiago, Dominican Republic, if you ever fly in there, you go to the airport. Uh, outside the airport, as you're checking in when you're actually leaving there and going, there's giant fans that are on the ceiling. And they don't go all that fast, but these giant fans actually bring the temperature down 10 degrees Cools the whole place. Outdoors. Cools outdoors when you stand on there in line waiting. It's unbelievable, and it's called Big Ass Fans. You Google it. You'll see it. Big Ass Fans. That's there. I actually look, look, looked at it today uh, for another project I might be working on, and uh, Big Ass Fans, and uh, that is patented. The Big Ass Tank is not patented. You make that up. That's patented. And, you, and, you and, start, and, and the you Big Ass it. Wheel is also patented. And you believe it. If you say it enough, it is true. Hey, Cigar Liberties is catching on, finally. Catching on. Okay, so yum. it's a mage. Who's, who's yum. coughing there? Yummy, yum, yum. Yum? Yum. Chocolatey, sweet, raisin. Yeah, it's sweet. Yep. This is a Nestle's Chunk Bar, is what this is. Chunky? The Chunky? The Chunky. Which one did you like? The silver one? The, the dark brown one? The copper one? I only remember the silver one. Yeah, that's all I remember. Well, the silver one had nuts in it, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. The dark one was just pure chocolate, and then the gold one had whatever the silver one didn't. One was yeah. nuts, one was raisins. Orange peel. <laughs> when I was a kid, we only had the silver one. Yeah, with the peanuts, the raisins, yeah. and the chocolate. The little cubes, right? Yeah. Yeah. You break Chunky. it off. Into yeah, the peanuts don't belong in chocolate. So and and I never sued them. One. You know, uh, I never sued them. There's two exceptions the trademark to trademark of Chunky because... <laughs> That's what I was kind Mr. Good Bar yeah. <laughs> no. and peanut M&M's no. are the two exceptions for nuts being combined with desserts of any kind. I don't even like peanut butter in my chocolate. Oh, come on. That's a sacrilege. Oh. No, no, no. Peanut butter sauce on a Sunday yes. is heaven. 
Like Heidi found out the way to get me to lay off the snack foods. She buys Reese's peanut butter cups. I could crush. They repulse me. Oh, really? Yes. Oh my God! Isn't that everybody's favorite? I could crush. Apparently those. not. Barry, there is there is something wrong with you. I, I hate to be the one to tell you that. It's all right. I'm all right There's with something that. wrong with you. I embrace it. Jump over to the dark side. Embrace it as well. Here we go. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. You guys are all, all wearing black. Oh. Until things are brighter. Yes, we're, we're channeling we're in our inner Johnny Cash. Would you say the cigar is a Maduro? I'm on the fence because it kind of has characteristics of Connecticut broadleaf, but it's not veiny and rustic enough to be broadleaf. Yeah, it's so it kind of looks like Habano Oscuro, but it kind of tastes like Connecticut broadleaf. The amazing thing is I don't have answers to that. I don't have answers of blending and things like that. I know who made it. I know what factory it came out of. But and I know what I paid for it. But I don't know anything about the cigar besides um, this is the perfect cigar for it. I want you to try it. And I did. And uh, we're going to get into more of that. This is the first cigar that I tasted this one distinct flavor on. And it is still there. And it is Dentine Gum Wrapper. The wrapper from Dentine Gum. The paper. The paper. If you've, ever, <laughs> if you've ever licked that or chewed on it, or you just sometimes you just take the Dentine, you throw it paper and all You know when mouth. you lick the paper know from the, a Dentine Gum? I don't know if that's a good thing, saying a cigar <laughs> tastes like that. paper. That, not paper. It tastes like the cinnamon coating that's on the paper, but that with just the slightest little touch of fresh ground pepper on the paper before you eat it. There's some pepper here. Especially Maybe some cinnamon. Those. So is it true when you were a kid that your father used to eat dentine gum and wouldn't give you any, and you would only get to lick the paper? Right? <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Another Mr. Jonathan. Yeah, we <laughs> I think we're having a breakthrough. Here. We're having a really? breakthrough. <laughs> we're having a breakthrough. Get in your comfortable spot or whatever you call that over there, and that's it. Uh, very nice cigar. Oh. Very, very nice. Uh, every, every, everybody that's joining us and listening to the show and smoking at the same time, I hope you're getting the notes of what's going on. The, the um, What you get from aged tobacco, a cigar that's made using aged tobacco and then formed into a cigar, it goes through a fermenting stage again automatically when it's formed into a cigar and then sitting, resting in perfect condition for five years. And Six years. Now, this was done on purpose, actually, to put this. You got these cigars, the people that are in the cigar care package. You got it uh, a month ago, and you've been sitting on it for a month because I didn't want it to go through a strain when, when you received it and got it a few days, and then you lit it up again because it went through UPS or whatever it ended up doing, and we're going to get into UPS and all that mess that if you guys haven't heard yet of what's going on there, but this thing at least got to rest when you had it too because – there is something to it. I mean, you get your cigars, let them rest down. They're going through a change of climate or whatever, and they end up getting better. We should be smoking this at the optimum uh, way that cigar can be. And uh, we're going to get into maybe the people that aren't in on the, on the care package. I'm going to tell you how maybe you can uh, get some of these maybe uh, if you're interested. Maybe, maybe. Uh, but you can get in on the care package uh, for next month. You do that by going on the cigarauthority.com. Look on the right-hand side. You see the Cigar Authority care package. Click the button. It takes you there. You put your information in. We're going to charge you $19.99 on Monday before 3 o'clock. If you clicked on it and it's after Monday because you're listening to the podcast on Tuesday or whatever and you're too late in on it, you can still do it, but you're not going to get the October one. You're gonna, we're not going to charge you. Are we going to charge you? Right no, away? We, don't, we don't charge you. Well, if they do it online, they'll be billed right away, um, but the recurring charge doesn't happen yeah. until the day it ships. Yeah. So the first time you order, it's at that point. Charged at that point, but we don't ship out until we ship out only because that's the way the computer system goes uh, or something. I don't know. So it's over my head. This is out of my... Uh, it's out of your league. Out of my league. So the chat room is already taking guesses of what it is. All right. So what do we get? Tell me some guesses. So far, 
the 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 most common guess is La Flor Dominicana. La Flor Dominicana. Ooh, That's a good guess. So, good guess. So, was Lido at that no, anniversary? Uh, first off, yes, he was. So that rules you, him out. But you you're obviously not paying attention <laughs> because the first thing I said is I'm going to give you a hint, and I said it's Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Yep. So you said Lido Gomez, who makes La Flor Dominicana. <laughs> Uh, no, that's <laughs> that's not. No, could Lido purchase tobacco from Nicaragua and make a Nicaraguan cigar? I guess he cigar? could, but he would have to build a factory there because I said I don't know what the makeup of the cigar is, but it's from Nicaragua. Okay, you did say that. So he yes. would have actually had to make the factory on there. So you got to play along with us. Hang you gotta, on, I'm I've giving got, you hints. I have, a, I have a question. Yeah, does Lido Gomez own a factory of any kind in Nicaragua? No. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Okay. I'm help it's helping me narrow it down. <laughs> oh wait, I already know the answer. <laughs> and that's the most common answer of it's Lito Gomez mm -hmm. who made the cigar. Isn't that something? Mm. Okay, so the good news is that we, we're careful to put our notes together and make sure we're accurate. Nobody's paying attention anyway. Right. That's the that's yeah. the fact of the fact, Jack, right? Mm. Now I, am I the only one that's experiencing the pepper come and go? Yeah, no, it's it's as though you were to just take a peppercorn, bite it, and then the pepper flares up, and it goes and goes and goes, and then it disappears. Yeah, it's yes. sprinkled throughout. And then yep. you hit another pocket, and you start with the pepper, and you're like, all right, here we go again. 100%. Okay, I'm going to get into it. Yes, here we go. Tell. It was late 2009 when Two Guys Smoke Shop uh, began preparing for its 25th anniversary. Uh, we asked every manufacturer that we were dealing with uh, in any large capacity if they wanted to be take part in the anniversary party. We're looking for 25 manufacturers. At Two Guys Smoke Shop's 25th Silver Anniversary, we, began, we would be giving away a Rolls-Royce Silver Spur and 254-ounce silver bars that were minted with the logos of all the brands participating. The first 25 manufacturers to respond quickly took up the spots, and some were unfortunately left out for the event. We were also looking for someone to make a very special cigar, Two Guys' 25th anniversary cigar. Our challenge was to get the right manufacturer to make it while we were trying to figure out who... Uh, in Pops. What am I saying here? While we were trying to figure out who, oh. comma, oh. in Pops, Mr. X. There we go. So I wrote this thing. I can't even read it. <laughs> the comma's there, too. So this guy walks into my office, and we're working on the cigar band. And we have a graphic designer in store working there. And while I'm talking to Mr. X in my office, he brings me over some rendition, uh, one rendition of this band and it's the exact band you see on here and i said wow it looks good to me but i want to defer to mr x because he does a lot of different bands and things and he's got a cool thing going on there what what do you think of this and he said it's great and i said now's the time to change anything should i see how it's like oblong and it's not actually round the band right. that's on it yeah. i said you think maybe it should be Mushed. mushed in and, and more round or something. He said, I think it's perfect just the way it is. So I said, okay, let's go with it just the way it is. And he's sitting in there, and he's got a bad look on his face like something's wrong at that moment. So I go, what's up? So he said, uh, you know, I made a big, big mistake. And I said, what's that? He says, 25 years you're in this business, and this is your celebration of it. And I said, yeah. And he said, and we decided we're not participating. And I said, that's all right. I said, it was the first 25 people that did. He says, no, I know there's a big obligation because in order for us to give away a Rolls Royce Silver Spur, 250 minted silver cigar bars, 25 cigars per person, there's dinner, some expenses entertainment, yeah. expenses. It's and, and you're kind of you're kind of underselling these uh, these silver bars. I mean, these are legit U.S. meant silver bars, and right. just instead of having the standard, you know, Federal Reserve print yeah. as a customized two guys print, but for all intents and purposes, it's a silver bar. Yeah. And you gave away how many? 250. Alongside a Rolls Royce. Right. And that's a and, friggin' deal. And, that's and a big deal. Listen, everybody got 25 cigars, $200 ticket, dinner, this and this. Mathematically, it's impossible because everybody averages out to about $600, $800 per person. And when we charge 200. So, how do we do it? I mean, how does that end up happening? 
the manufacturer is helping along with us. It is not a profit thing by any means. We lose money and it's okay, but it's us giving back saying thank you to our customers for helping us get get to 25 years, get along the way with whatever we're celebrating. And this Wednesday, we're celebrating 30 years. We're giving away a Mercedes-Benz and $30,000, and somebody can win both. How they, dinner, um, 20, uh, 30 cigars. Um, you Smoke know. in Vegas entertainment. Yeah. So how, how does this end up happening? A big, big part is the manufacturer. So we help support the manufacturer along the way, and we hope and we ask, and we do it very, very um debonair way style is we send a letter out to them and we say, if you would like to do it, please respond. If we don't hear from you, we'll assume you're out. You don't have to say no to me. I don't look you in the eye and, and you know, there's no so hard I spend sell a lot here. Of, it's very yeah, soft. If you want to do it or not. Well, this particular person decided not to because, hey, maybe they can't afford it. Maybe they have lots of expenses this year. They just don't want to do it. Who knows what it is? But listen, I don't say a word. That's it. We move along and we continue to carry everybody's cigars and do what we do. So he said, uh, I made a big mistake. And I said, no, no, no. And I knew where he was going at that point. He goes, 25 years. He says, this is a big milestone. And lo lots of retailers don't e even get to this milestone. Look at this event and where it's, where it's going. And now you're making a special cigar for it. And I said, yeah. He says, please allow me to make the cigar. And I said, no, no, no. I said, you can't. I said, you can't because there's 25 manufacturers that paid big money. And then I'm going to hand out your cigar and make a big deal about the special cigar that was made as somebody that didn't participate in here. And he goes, I don't even want any recognition. I just want to do it. And how many are you going to need? And I said, I don't know, like a thousand cigars or 1,200 cigars or whatever number I ended up saying. And he said, how's this? I'm doing it for free. And I said, absolutely not. I said, listen, this we're actually, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag because you're not in the, in the thing anyway. We're making a comic book, and we're in search for the best cigar, ba 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 ba, And that's the whole thing. And he says, at the end of it, don't even mention who I am in it. Just it's, it's, a, it's an unknown figure that ends up giving you the cigar or whatever it is. You don't even say who I am. It's okay. I don't want the recognition to it. I'm very sorry I didn't participate. And I said, please don't feel that way. And there's nothing there. And he goes, please, 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 begging me to please make these cigars for you for free with no recognition at all. And I said, I don't know. And he says, please let me send you some cigars. I have the perfect thing, I think, for you. Ba 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 ba. I didn't have them on him. And in the comic book, he actually hands me the cigars. He didn't hand it to me at that moment because he didn't know what was happening. A, a week or two later, I get some cigars. Here they are. They're, they're perfect. They're, they're this cigar. Yeah. So what do you think? And I said, it's perfect. Are you sure? Please let me pay. Absolutely not. He sends me way more cigars than he said than I even asked for. And we ended up putting the dark figure in the comic book. And there it is. And he, here's, uh, here's what it is. And uh, that was it. So uh, any, uh, any last guesses on here, Barry, before I say who it is? Well, I kind of know who it is. You so know who it is. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Nobody in the chat room. No, somebody in the chat room got it. Somebody in the chat room got it. Yeah. Okay. So it was it was Pete Johnson. And Rudy was the one that got it. Rudy. Rudy, Rudy got Rudy. it. So thank you, Pete Johnson. Finally, I can say it in front of people, and other people say it. Uh, it, it was very, very nice of you to do it. Please don't ever feel like you need, anybody manufacturer needs to be part of this. We have crazy ideas. We come up with crazy things. And, um, it you doesn't know, fit if, everybody's model. No. And, and, you know, five years ago when you were a smaller company and you're growing and it's great to see. And you know what? Here's our 30th anniversary, and he'll be with us Thursday, and he's flying in to do it. And nice. He thinks, Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. Um, so, uh, thank you to him. Thank you to Don Papin Garcia, who actually made the cigar. And I don't know if he paid him to do it or he gave it for free too. Yeah. It, you know, I know nothing. I know nothing besides they arrived. Are you sure you, you know, even when I got them, are you sure you don't want me to pay for them? I paid zero for them and I sold them for a hundred dollars a piece. So thank you. Wow. You know, wow. uh, not necessary. And, uh, just uh, I never forgot it, and I said I wasn't going to say anything, and I thought magically five years have passed. Let me end up doing this. So this is a, a special Tatuaje limited release that was made for our 25th anniversary. 
six years ago it was made and nobody ever knew what it was and if you ended up having it and you say wow this is a unique cigar or something it is unique um it is uh, a special cigar and i i've <coughs> saved a lot of those cigars and in the next hour we're going to tell you um um how to get a hold of it in the next half hour or something. We're going to tell you how to get a hold of it and uh, make it available to you if you want to try this cigar now that you know who's behind it. Next Saturday on the show, Nelson Alfonso. He is the creative genius behind Atabay, Byron, and Bandolero cigars, among many other cigars we won't be talking about during that show, but he is the guy that puts uh, together all the limited releases for Habanos in Cuba. Uh, he won't be talking about them. He'll be talking about his own cigars, he, he informs me. Uh, but he'll be on a next week's show live because he's coming up for the 25th anniversary. So uh, right now, your thoughts on Two Guys' 25th anniversary cigar now that you know who makes it? Well, I'll tell you, the classic pepperiness from Papine is present. Yeah. Although it comes in pockets. It's not all the way through. But the one flavor I'm noticing all the way through is Barry's favorite flavor is that cinnamon from the Dentine gum wrapper <laughs> i agree with that there's definitely some cinnamon going on yeah. <laughs> close enough <laughs> but i'm also close. getting a rich chocolate flavor as well yeah i'm getting chocolate and it, you you guys both have had this f about six years ago uh it's not as strong as i remember i feel like it's kind of sure give tempered it, down a little give bit it, sure. which it absolutely has give it time about the halfway mark is when it kicks into full gear if i'm not mistaken. i like where it is i yep. think it's, yeah yeah now this a lot of people over the years has said to me, who makes a cigar, who makes a cigar, and lots and lots of guesses. The most guess that came to me during those five-year thing was Padron. Mm. They said it was a Padron round. Yeah. It's not. Um, this is Don Pepin Garcia six years ago. Um, was that before My Father Cigars? It might have been before. I think it was, yeah. Yeah. If you look through the comic book, you're going to see Tim Osniger, who was um, CAO. CAO. Yeah. Um, you know, it was six years ago, there was a lot of different thing, people that were in the business at the time, uh, all of which uh, did it. And you're going to have a chance to get the, the comic book also uh, with the cigars, and we'll, we'll say that the next uh, after we take our break. Right now, let's take a break and come back. The results are in. The winners of the 2015 Cigar Journal Award Ceremony that took place in Germany. We have the results of it, and we're going to pick through that. Uh, we'll give you their results and our take on it. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Cigar Radio Network. Okay, people, we've just been awarded the Brickhouse Ad Account. Now, this cigar was named Best Bargain Cigar of 2009 by Cigar Aficionado, got a 91 rating, plus it's the hottest cigar on the market. So, we need an award-winning slogan. He's a brick. Oh, How? What about, it's not your grandfather's cigar? Ah, it's been done. Next. How about good to the last draw? Ah, something original, people. You deserve a brick today? Who are you? Do you even work here? Excuse me, sir. Am I to understand that every Brickhouse cigar is built with all the flavor and quality of the premium cigars of yesteryear? Yesteryear? Really? That's right, Bixby. But yeah, it costs around five bucks each. Indeed. Well, sir, people don't really need a slogan. They don't? No, sir. Then what do they need? Five bucks and a comfortable chair. Five bucks and a comfortable chair, genius! <laughs> Meet the perfect cigar to share with friends. Brickhouse by J.C. Newman. Handmade in Nicaragua with a fine Havana Subido wrapper. Brickhouse starts out earthy and crisp and burns well-rounded and smooth. Nothing stands the test of a good time like a Brickhouse. For more, visit BrickhouseCigars.com. When you light a Davidoff cigar, you set aglow the richest tradition of cigar making in the world. You release craftsmanship achieved by our investment in that most precious of commodities, time. The time it takes to create a Davidoff cigar as it passes through 600 hands before it arrives in yours. The time it takes to age and mature the tobacco which fills a Davidoff cigar, sometimes as much as 10 years. The time it takes to hand pick, hand roll, and then carefully hand check each individual cigar before it is fit to wear the legendary Davidoff white band. In every second of enjoyment, there are decades of experience. In every way, it is time beautifully filled. 
cigar smokers. How about if we go over a few cigar store sounds? Can you guess what this is? Oh, yeah. You think you got it? Okay. Do you know what this is? Now for the cigar. What do you think of this cigar? So. I'm lighting up a La Giana Havana cigar. The La Giana Havana natural cigars are, oh yeah, so smooth. And oh yeah, the Maduro version is a bit beefed up. But oh yeah, they're delicious too. When asked what my favorite cigar is, I always say it's La Giana Havana. Oh yeah. Walking in, you're greeted with the aroma of friendship. You move to the humidor and reach into the hallmark molded steel box, retrieving the only cigar worthy of such elegant protection. Your cut is meticulous. The light, easy and full. Your taste buds are immediately inundated with a barrage of wood and rare spice flavors, all finished with a trademark plume of smoke. Moscow City Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donut. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more. It's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. Jose Hi, this is Pete Johnson from Top of White Cigars, and you are listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Cigar Retailers Radio Network. And we're back live from the Florida Dominicana Cigar Studios. You're listening to The Cigar Authority, a weekly broadcast now over five years running about cigars and the nonsense surrounding them. What is the best cigar from each country? The folks at Cigar Journal Magazine have done a lot of research, and I believe they came up with some of the right answers but we're going to be the judge of it. We're going to we pick are. it apart. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. We're smoking Two Guys Smoke Shop's 25th Anniversary Cigar, a cigar that was made six years ago for our five-year-ago anniversary. Our 25th anniversary was Pete Johnson, who uh, was a uh, gentleman, uh, like, unbelievable to uh, donate these cigars to us. Um, with the stipulation of nobody will ever know that you're the one that gave it to us or who made the cigar. And uh, he agreed to it anyway, and uh, we're letting him know today. Thank you so much. I certainly said thank you then, but thank you uh, in front of everybody. Uh, thank you so much for the cigar, and uh, it is a special cigar. We're talking during the break as we're smoking it. Milk chocolate, cinnamon with some pepper. Every single one of us is getting it, even yeah. the guys in the studio audience here with us that are smoking it along with us. Have you guys ever had uh, sweet tea down south? Yeah. I'm picking yeah. up a little bit of sweet tea. So you imagine you're you're having dessert at lunch, and you got your sweet tea, and you've got your chili pepper infused milk chocolate, right? Maybe a little bit of cinnamon on top of the tea, and you, you got to have the chocolate with the... With the um, oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. I because can... there's, a, there's a little sharp note. It's happening. I'd like my it. I'd like my sound effect, please. Now, Chuck. The shop no could be. Frank shop says I nailed it. From cinnamon sharpness, or it could be the little spicy pet. Because there's a little, uh, you know, you got a little <laughs> spice thing happening here. You definitely do. Yeah. <laughs> you really, you really just barely graduated high school, huh? <laughs> barely. <laughs> uh, what's funny is you're a good communicator. <laughs> you can't always find the word, but then when you don't, you make the sound of. <laughs> 
Yeah, there it's it is. That, a little hot. You you know exactly what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so uh, okay, let's let's through look through um, Cigar Journal magazine. And as I told you, I have something around my contact lens Just today. Quickly, the yeah. chat room wants to know how they come by these. We're gonna get to it. Okay. In this half hour, we're gonna get to gotcha. it. Gotcha. I jumped um, the gun. My apologies. No, that's all right. Uh, held as part of the Inter Tobacco Trade Fair. Um, that's been around since 1998. Uh, it just took place last week. And during it, the Cigar Journal decided not to do it at the IPCPR what they usually no, usually do. They decided to do it there. And uh, they give awards uh, each year um, to not only the best brands, but the best cigars. So I want to tell you the difference. There's the best brand, which would be the whole brand as, as one. Perdomo, for example, would be a brand. Right. And then Perdomo 20th anniversary would be Maduro would Toro would be the cigar right. or whatever. Now so, this is this is their fifteenth year doing these cigar awards. Yes, they have been doing it since nineteen ninety eight, as you said. Yeah, so we'll go through some of them and uh, see what uh, we think of it, and um, uh, see what you guys think. And if you haven't heard already, uh, who won? Um, the best brand for Cuba for two thousand fifteen, and this is interesting now that they have. Um, this is the year of 2015, and they're in the year 2015. That's what they're saying uh, where, they're, where it is. So uh, not next year's. It's this year's. This year's. Right? Right. It's not what happened last year. It's what happened this year. What we're in. So they're actually the first one. They're not last. They're first. Right. If you're not first, you're last. I'm following you. I'm okay. lost. I'm with you. This is the first... <laughs> Awards for the best cigars for this year. Okay, because everybody else's list is the year prior. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Everyone else will start in January. Well, whenever they're going to do it, but right. this is the first one. So we're, we're in the year that we're in right now is what they're talking about. The best brand in Cuba for 2015 is Cohiba. And but they're all the same. They are all the same. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to say that anymore. You Here said it. Go. Barry Stein. <laughs> I'm stirring the pot. Yeah. <laughs> it's what I do. Um, <laughs> it is certainly, for Cuba, their most prized possession, besides mm -hmm. Bahique. It's their most prized mm -hmm. possession is Cohiba. They're saying that it's the best brand. This is uh, Cigar Journal, which is an international publication. It's not a U.S. publication. It's international. It's actually written in German, bilingual into English. Very interesting magazine. If you haven't picked it up before, I'm going to say it's the best cigar magazine Listen, going. It sits, down. It, it sits down, and, and down in the shop next to all the magazines, and it yeah. outsells them all because people that are into cigars are yeah. into actually reading the articles. Yeah. I, and I am, and I think I know a lot about cigars, but I learn I every single every time. time. Best brand in Brazil. I didn't know they made brands in Brazil, and I did research on this, Barry. It's actually made in Brazil. It's not just Brazilian tobacco, and it is Brazilian tobacco. Mm -hmm. It's a Brazilian puro, mm -hmm. meaning every single part of the cigar is from Brazilian tobacco, and it's actually handmade, rolled, and shipped from Brazil, is, the, is Villiger. Right, the Tobajara. Yeah. So uh, they're staying true to it, um, that they actually um, said a Brazil cigar is Brazilian, not the, just Brazilian tobacco. The one tobacco. that gets me is the best brand for Dominican Republic. Okay. So as I said, they're staying true to what it is. So uh, where is it made? The best brand for the Dominican Republic 2015 is Davidoff Nicaraguan. Now, the entire brand. Doesn't that say that the magazine is essentially saying that Nicaraguan tobacco is the best tobacco and it's made, it tastes the best when it's made in the Dominican Republic, fermented that way? Whatever they did to Davidoff Nicaraguan, it is very different than the cigar we're smoking and every other Nicaraguan cigar yeah, we have. Is different. Davidoff Nicaraguan a Nicaraguan puro, Barry Stein? No. It is not. It's Ecuadorian. There's Ecuador, there's Dominican in it. It's. It's, it's a, just a brand name. It's a mutt, right. But there is Nicaraguan tobacco. Yeah. So it's a brand name, Davidoff Nicaraguan. It's not made in Nicaragua. It has Nicaraguan tobacco, mm -hmm. not exclusively, not a puro, but it's a brand name, Davidoff Nicaraguan. Right. Similar to the Escurio, which isn't all Brazilian. Right. So. Hmm. Yeah. As far as I know, the only all Brazilian cigar is Villiga. So I've actually smoked it. Really? It's very, very different than what the American palate is used to. They couldn't lose, though, because I think they're the only one. So that's awesome. <laughs> we can look forward to them winning again next year. <laughs> right. 
Uh, best brand in Honduras. A lot of cigars in Honduras. Um, and this is not a new brand by any means, and it doesn't have to be, apparently. But this is the Rocky Patel Vintage 1990. Best cigar in Honduras. Best brand coming out of um, Honduras. I guess coming out of, right? Mm, yeah. Coming out of that country. Hailing from. Hailing from. Uh, best brand in Costa Rica uh, is Brune Del Rey. Yep. That's how I said yep. it, right? I don't agree with that, but yeah. Uh, and the gold. Um, I've smoked it. And I believe I have smoked it, and I thought I liked it. I liked it. I'm pretty sure. I don't, just don't, don't know it well enough, but you know it. Yes. Okay. And I, it's probably the only one on the list so far that I very much disagree with. Okay. Like, I can understand the Rocky. Would it be my vote? No. Would it be in the top three? Yes. Um, but I just don't agree with the burn delay. Okay. I don't know it well enough to, to just disagree with it. I'll disagree because I know other cigars that come out of Costa Rica that are my favorite, so... Um, we're on the same page. Yeah, that, yeah. I think. Okay. So uh, best brand in Nicaragua. A lot of choices in Nicaragua. Best brand. And they chose the Padron Family Reserve line as the best in Nicaragua. A lot of competition there. Yes. That there is. Hmm. So uh, that is the best brand. We're gonna Now, go really, it's the readers that are choosing this. Well, th that is it. That they, um, they put together. Did they put... Um, you could list anything or you had some choices at the beginning like there, there were choices there were right. like i think there was three to five per category and you couldn't you know you couldn't just be some geek off the street you had to actually have a legitimate brand to right have so a they, chance so to they put the list. they put contenders out there and then they for the first time threw it to the readers to yep. give votes mm -hmm. and then they got the votes down and then they end up really difficult them. to have to deal with backlash that way because you can just put it on the readers and say listen people voted for this Right, right. So it's very it, smart. So maybe not. Maybe it isn't at that point the best. It's the most popular. A it, to a degree, contest. it has to be a popularity contest. Okay. You know, I don't know if everybody smoked. You know, the Villager cigar, but Villager is a name that people would know worldwide. Yep. It would have to be a worldwide brand, actually, you know, because their readers yep. are everywhere. Right as opposed to just the United States. Okay, it's time for this classic day in classic history, brought to you by Classic Cigars. You've heard of epic rap battles. <laughs> but now it's time for the epic battle. Wow, it's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day. Tell anyone about this, I'll kill you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. In classic history. It is looking at you, kid. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Nervous? Yes. All classic cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic, and every cigar is priced under, get this, under $3 per cigar. You like that, baby? Let him know where I came from, yeah! Choose any blend, including the classic Connecticut for its mild and smooth taste, the classic Maduro for its bold and spicy flavor, or the classic Cuban for its sweet, sun-grown, and nutty overtones. That's undertones, you idiot! Whichever classic you choose, it's a classic cigar. Available at twoguyscigars.com. That's twoguyscigars.com. Celebrate today with a classic cigar. Okay, Barry Stein, you're still our champion. Yes, sir. Today is September 26th. It's going to you first. And today's the birth date of Serena Williams. Serena Williams, tennis player. Tennis star who won every major tournament and became the oldest number one champion ever in 2013. She captured her 18th career Grand Slam with her U.S. Open win in 2014, tying her for second most all-time with Chris Everett and Martina Navatolova. How's that? Pretty I good. I, thought I was, was going to go with that. McBride. Uh, she is the younger sister of fellow tennis star Venice, Venice? That, uh, Venus. Venus Williams. Born today, Serena Williams. What year? 1976. 1976, he says. 1972, Dave. 72. I'm going with 1980. 1980 for the win. 1981. Mr. Jonathan takes the early lead. He's been there before. He blows it at the end. Uh, and you haven't played for a while, Chuck, so welcome back. Um, today is to Chuck, to you. Um, today is the birth date of Olivia Newton-John. Olivia Newton-John, sure. multiple Grammy winner, win, uh, winning actress, and singer who gained her fame in Greece 
and released the double platinum al album Physical. Let's get physical. She sold over 100 million records. How does that go again? Let's get physical. Oh, physical. I, th I didn't know it the first time, but you hit it so perfect Thank the second you. time. Thank uh, you. Uh, I know. She has Changing sold over 100 answer. million records and has released over 10 top 10 Billboard Hot 100 singles. Born today, Olivia Newton-John. What year was she born? She was born in 1945, Dave. 45, Chuck says. 1959. 59, Barry. 1946. For the win, 46. It's 48. Barry takes a point. I would like to uh, register an objection that Barry had not written his answer down when Ooh. you had called on him. 1948, was... and I always deduct two. So 1948 to 1946. All written I was down. contemplating Ooh. whether or not to deduct the Even two. Even the math. You always got something to say, Mr. John. You, I'm just you're saying. You're a sore loser. I'm just you saying. Are. And you're not even losing yet. <laughs> <laughs> I will. So I'm still registering my objection for when I lose. All right. It's going to you. You ready? I'm ready. Today is the birthday of Donna Douglas. Donna Douglas. You know she is? White man to make me moist. No, that's Michael Douglas. It is. Michael Donna Douglas. Douglas is a TV actress, film, and television leading lady uh, forever remembered as Ellie Mae Clampett on the Beverly Hillbillies. She was a high school athlete playing basketball and softball, and she was named both Miss New Orleans and Miss Baton Rouge in beauty contests. She, passed, Baton away. Rouge. she passed away on January 1st this year, but she was born today. What year? 1936. 36, he says, Barry Stein. 1929. 29. And Chuck. Oh, man, I think I'm over. 1940. You are over. 1929 will take it. 1932, Barry Stein, to take the lead. It's just the same thing. It's like Groundhog Day around here. <laughs> he also was still figuring the math. Yeah, but I had to. When you the, called the, on it. I had the deduction already written. So we don't have to worry because he's first, okay? Cry, baby. That's he's first because he's cheating is my Shit. point. If you're not the first, you're last. <laughs> <laughs> if you ain't cheating, you ain't playing, I guess. There we go. Okay, Barry, today is the birth date of Linda Hamilton. Linda Hamilton. She is a movie actress. She gained widespread recognition for portraying waitress turned warrior Sarah Connors in the Terminator film and franchise opposed opposite Arnold Schwarzenegger. From 1987 to 1989, she paid Catherine Chandler in Beauty and the Beast. She is Linda Hamilton. Born today, what year? 51. 51, he says. Oh, man. I got 39. 39? 1951 is what I have written down. We have two at 1951, which will take the point. Both of you get a point. It's 1956. So Barry has three points. And Mr. Jonathan has two. Chuck? You haven't been playing yeah, lately. A little so rusty. A little, little rusty. rusty. Yeah, that's, let's go with that because you weren't playing all that well when you were playing. All right. You got a chance to at least come in second place right, to the tie because this is the last question. Mr. Jonathan, you need uh, a point to tie, two to win. And Barry, she would just hand it over to you. But this mm -hmm. is going to Chuck. All right. Jonathan Goldsmith. Jonathan Goldsmith. Jonathan Taylor Thomas. TV actor. Acting veteran mm -hmm. whose career has been revitalized as the most interesting man in the world oh, in right. beer advertisements. Yes. All right. His name is Jonathan Goldsmith. Good research, Dave. Here we go. Born today, what year? I got to write it down, huh? Um, <laughs> You're first. You don't have yeah. to write it down. All right. Good man. Uh, 32. 32, he says. 1947. 47. Barry. 45. 45. Mr. Jonathan is over. Barry is over. Chuck gets the point I'll and no it. shutout. I'll but take the, it. But the win goes again to Barry Stein, our reigning champion. Barry the cheater Stein. Steroids. Absolutely not. All the math Steroids. is right here. And this classic day in classic history is brought to you by Classic Cigars. Whatever classic you choose, it's available on twoguyscigars.com. That's twoguyscigars.com. Celebrate today with a classic cigar. And a quick reminder, if it's your birthday, come into any Two Guys Smoke Drop location, Salem, Seabrook, or Nashua, New Hampshire, on your birthday, and they will cut and light a free happy birthday cigar just for you. Okay, we're going to continue with the Cigar Journal Awards. We went over the best brands. Now we're going to actually narrow in to the best actual cigar of those countries. So we know that uh, Cuba is the best cigar brand that they have is the Cohiba 
brand. Cuban Cohiba brand. Mm. So what would be the best exact cigar? Well, since they're the same, why don't we go with uh, Monty number two? Which would be correct. I get the, two the points Monte for that. Monte number two. He's cheating. It's right here. I have it written down right here. <laughs> Monte Cristo number two is chosen as their best cigar, yet the whole best brand. I don't know. Am I missing something? No, yet? I think I think <laughs> the voters have it dead on balls accurate. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. If you look okay. at the picture, the wrappers look identical. Yeah, identical. <laughs> identical. Maybe a little darker on the Cohiba. I don't know. I'm yeah. just saying. <laughs> best cigar in the Dominican Republic for 2015. They said the best brand was Davidoff Nicaraguan. The best individual cigar would be obviously Davidoff Davidoff Winston Churchill Toro well now this is the thing I'm gonna say is (laughs) I believe the Toro to be the best size in that line even though it's Winston Churchill you would expect it to be the Churchill Mm. I'm a big fan they've got a bigger ring gauge on the Toro it burns Mm. cooler Mm. the subtleties are there I think this is a win in a rarity I 100% agree both ways well, no, I don't go both ways. Okay. But I agree with the Toro being oh, the best Toro's size. The best <laughs> <one>. <laughs> yeah, you need the money or something. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> hey. hey. Uh, best cigar for Honduras. We know Rocky Patel won for the best brand with the Rocky Patel Vintage. 1990 is the best brand for Rocky Patel. And Rocky Patel wins again. But no, it is not the Vintage 2010. It's the Rocky Patel Edge Maduro Robusto. Mm-hmm. I'm confused with it's this. It's very, okay. very interesting <laughs> yeah. how this is playing it's out. It's still the same companies, but it becomes a different brand yeah. from those companies, different line of it. Again, a popularity contest, but narrowing it down to the exact cigar they like. But, you know, if I was going to pick, and I like Davidoff Nicaraguan as the best brand they make, and I would say the Toro is the best one of that. It I would, would be, say the Diadema but no, it becomes, that one. But. And it becomes the Winston Churchill right. of that. I, yeah, just whatever. Okay, so... <laughs> Going back to Nicaragua, the best Nicaraguan cigar brand was Padron Family Reserve. Mm -hmm. So what is the best cigar of Nicaragua? Well, this one stays true to form. It absolutely does. It's actually in there. The Padron Family Reserve 50th Maduro, which I haven't had a lot of. I I had the the 50th... um, Celebration? What do they call the, the one in the humidor? Yeah, right? the real yeah. expensive one. I did try both of them. I haven't had that yet. You haven't had the. No, one I know you the... offered me to take one. I just felt too guilty to uh, actually take one. Too late now because <laughs> they're all gone. Yeah. Um, but Davidoff 50, this is the regular line of the 50th, right? Is what they're saying here. Yes. The family, family reserve, reserve 50, 50 is different than the, the regular one 50th. that regular people can. Uh, um, as Do opposed it. to abnormal people. Okay, best value. Best value cigars. We're going to go to best value in Honduras. The best value cigar, 2015 in Honduras. Uh, not necessarily the best brand, which they say is Rocky Patel. It is not the edge, the best individual cigar, but it's the best value. Would go to Camacho Corojo. I don't disagree with that. And not an individual um, size, size just, but the whole line. The best yeah. value of Honduran cigars is the da- is the Camacho Corojo. The best value in Nicaragua um, is uh, is not the Padron because they're very expensive, so they brought it down to Oliva Series V. And, Been around a long time. And, and I got a question about and, that. And and what Perdomo Twentieth Sun Grown. Also, oh, we have a tie. tie. We have a tie. Because I was saving that for next, thinking it was a different country, but it is not. The best Time. value in Nicaragua, Perdomo 20th anniversary, which is not their lowest price by any means. No, and the same with the V. I don't <clears throat> necessarily get the word value being attached. What is the retail the well, value? Think about this, though. It, it may be Nick, one of Nick's more expensive lines, but dollar value wise, you get an awful lot of cigar in that 20th. Yeah. Then. In my opinion, even compared to his craft series and his small batch, uh, you get an awful lot out of that. To if, me, if, value should be six dollars or less, just what, based no, on but price. Both, yeah. That's just basing on price. But but, but what you're you, getting, you're getting a great cigar yeah. for ten bucks. It smokes like a great ten dollars cigar, but I don't associate but, ten dollars with value. See, okay, I think so it if we look like twenty dollars, if you look at the Padron Fifty, that's a thirty dollars cigar. Yeah. Is it thirty? I think it's 20, twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. Twenty five dollars cigar, and you put the. Perdomo 20th anniversary 
next to that as $10. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say the Padron 20th anniversary is a great value? The Padron one. And that ends That's things, a fair yes. point. That's a I, great I'm, point. I'm just making the argument yeah. of maybe yeah, that's you the way get an people awful are. lot of cigar for mm -hmm. 10 bucks on that on that 20th, in my opinion. But what what would an in, you know best cigar for under six dollars? It's just saying value because yeah, just this it, way it's a great value for what it is. And I'll believe I'll say the same for Oliva V. Mm. For that kind of price, for that kind of full body mm. cigar, that's a good value. But they're both good values for what they are. Absolutely. Not for the lowest price that we have in the store, by all means, but I would say they're both you good values. You put those cigars up against cigars that are twice their value, twice their price, and they stand up, and that, to me, is a good value. Same with Camacho. Right? right. Yep. For what it is, for that price, it's not, it, it's not um, their lowest price, but uh, cigar that they have, but for the money, it's for the money, right? Uh, for pound money. for pound for the money, or exactly. some sort of wording. Maybe value is the right wording. I don't know. We're going to take a break. Um, we're going to get to um, more of the two guys' anniversary cigar, but we're going to light up a new cigar in the next hour. So we'll tell you the, uh, our last comments on uh, on that. Mr. Jonathan's got an editorial we're going to try to squeeze in. Um, we got some mailbags. I doubt we're going to get to it. Old Fod Freddy, the Asylum. Uh, Barry's got some news, and um, we'll tell you a little more about the sold out. Uh, party that's coming up and maybe give you a little little hints on that. We're live from Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Cigar Radio Network. And there's no doubt about it, you've learned nothing else from the last hour. But keep in mind, if you happen to be smoking your Two Guys 25th anniversary cigar made by Pete Johnson, keep the lid end out of your mouth. You know, some football players today remind me of Cuban cigars. They're weaker, they talk too much, and they don't pack the same punch they used to. Take it from Mike Ditka, member of Camacho's Board of the Bold, and check out the new Camacho Corojo line of smokes. Built for the expert palate and fine-tuned for maximum flavor impact, consistency, and quality. In a world where the success of a cigar brand is recognized by its flavor, comes two that go head to head. One man smoking two cigars at the same time. Two rappers united in name, but separated by taste. One cigar known as the natural. The natural is no lightweight. It boasts full flavor and taste. The United Cigar Natural. Now comes the Maduro. Darker and even more bolder. With in-your-face flavor. United Cigar. Nothing could prepare you for what awaits you in the box. Both box pressed. Both 65 million years in the making. Uh, that may be wrong. Well, I'm going with it anyway. Action. Adventure. And bromance. That's right. Bromance. United Cigar. Available in natural or Maduro. Available only at appointed United Cigar retailer shops nationwide. Rated D for delicious. Under 18, not admitted even with a parent. United Cigars. You don't have to choose. Smoke them both. Founded in 1989 by Mariana and Nestor Miranda, Miami Cigar & Company proudly celebrates their 25th anniversary with the release of their flagship brand, the Nestor Miranda Collection. Made in Esteli, Nicaragua by Don Pepin Garcia, the collection is available in three distinct wrappers aimed to please even the toughest critic. Nestor Miranda Collection. You only get one life. How will you live yours? This is Jonathan Carney with the Florida Vancana. I'm J.R. Dominguez. This is John Hart. This is Victor Vitale. Hi, this is Pete Johnson. Steve Saka. Hi, this is Phil Zangi. This is a little bit of Jay. Is the Cigar Authority. Dan Faith. The authority on everything cigar. Shake it back. In. Get used to hear it. And out of the cigar industry. Do it. With your hosts. That's a lovely accent you have. David Garofalo. New Jersey. Austria. Austria. <laughs> Well, then, good day, mate. Let's put another shrimp on the ball, babe. Mr. Jonathan. Dear Lord, baby Jesus, or as our brothers to the south call you, hey, Zeus, we thank you so much for this bountiful harvest of Domino's, KFC, and the always delicious Taco Bell. Barry Stein. That's what I love about these high school girls. I get older, they stay the same age. 
<laughs> and Chuck Morrison. Is this your place? No. No, 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 no. No, I live with my mom. Oh. Yeah. You hungry? Hey, Ma! We get some meatloaf! It's time to light them up. There's no smoking in here. It's time. Oh, it's all right, darling. I'm a volunteer fireman. For the Cigar Authority. Hey, shake it back, gal! Woo! And we're back with our number two, broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Studios today at Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. We're smoking Two Guys' 25th anniversary cigar. We're going to tell you in just a minute exactly how you can get a hold of this. We got Old Fart Freddy, good news and bad news. Gentleman Chuck Morrison is here live and lots more. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. Hey, you are listening to the Cigar Authority, the only radio show in the U.S. and, yes, the world that is always broadcast on location, and we are the only show that doesn't just allow smoking. We insist, we demand that you light up along with us. You tune in at thecigarauthority.com where you can watch this mess live or you catch the podcast on demand at any time. Simply find us on iTunes or YouTube where you can set it and forget it on both. All right, what are you thinking of the 25th anniversary? We're still smoking it. I hate to put it down. Do we have to put it down? Uh, I feel bad for the cigar that we're going to smoke next because no matter what it was in comparison, <laughs> it's an awesome We've cigar. We've been talking about Hang value. On a Listen, so you're going to talk bucks, about comparisons now? It's a good value for $100. <laughs> I'll tell you, right? man. You wish you bought it and got a silver bar, $200 and got the silver bar and All got day. the two cigars, but I'm going to tell you right now, um, you can still get the cigar. You never could before. We, we sold it that day. That was it. You can never buy it again until right now. So as I told you, he made more cigars than I asked for, but I put them aside for a special occasion. I thought five years was the special occasion. It's our 30th anniversary. We did not make a 30th anniversary cigar. We're going to sell the 25th. Okay, so I'm going to tell you how to do it. So I smoke one every year in celebration of my anniversary. At my anniversary party, that's what I'm usually smoking every single year is this cigar. Didn't know that. Yeah. It's funny because you got all these different manufacturers. So I'll take the band off. I'll smoke the cigar just in memory myself of, cool. of it. And, uh, and I believe these cigars actually right now have peaked. I smoke them every year <laughs> along the way. They've never been better than they are today. And they were awesome from day one, but they have peaked. This is the point. This is it right now. You know, and I will save some. And I'll get to it 10 years from now and a little handful of my own cigars for my, for my own sake. But I got to believe that they're going to start mellowing out to a point. But right now, it's a chocolate bar, oh, man. Yeah. It's a chocolate bar with a little uh, jalapeno in it, like, like you were saying, the little mm -hmm. cinnamon that's going on. We're agreeing exactly what we're trying. Mm -hmm. And I hope you guys, along with it, as you're smoking this, uh, are getting what we're getting out of it. I, I got to imagine they're all the same. Audience, yeah. Yep. I'm oh, a yeah. I'm a Tatsuahe fanboy. I don't hide the fact this cigar is an epic Tatsuahe. So I'm going to... Uh, Probably smoke more than I did before, one a year now. Uh, you know, have some now and then. Um, but I'm going to allow people to purchase if they want to do it. Believe me, no pressure. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it or whatever. But they're not going to be $200 cigars or anything. That was the deal. And uh, I broke the deal. I don't know if I was supposed to break the deal, but I broke the deal. Uh, I'm telling your boss. There we go. So we're going to give you three different options, three different ways you can buy the cigar. So option one is buy any box of My Father Cigars, Don Pepin Garcia Cigars, or Tatuaje Cigars. Any box of their cigar, and I'm going to throw in two, two guys' 25th anniversary cigars with each box that you buy. And we'll even include issue number one of the comic book, The Adventures of Two Guys, The Quest for the Best Cigar. Which is a bit of a misnomer because there's only ever been one issue. There it is. Uh, this issue is number one, but there has only been one, one issue, FYI, so far. Huh? Uh-oh. You never know. So that's option number one. You get it for free. Buy a box of their cigar, and I think that's a debonair thing to do, right? They're the ones that gave it to me. You buy a box of their cigars. I'm going to give you not one, but two of this cigar. Because we're two free. guys, and that's our favorite That's number. it. And the comic book. <clears throat> option number two. Buy two guys. Buy two Two guys' 25th anniversary cigars, two of them for $25. It was the 25th anniversary. You can buy two cigars, 25 bucks. It's $12.50 a piece, but you can't buy one. You got to buy two because we're two guys. Two for $25, and you don't have to buy any boxes of anybody's cigars if that's what you want to do. And option number three, we're not throwing in a comic book with that. That's it. You're just buying two cigars, and that's it. Um, listen, you don't have the money to spend $150 on a box of cigars or whatever, so we're giving you an option to, to get in on it. 
Uh, option number three is buy 12 Two Guys Smoke Shop Anniversary Cigars for a discounted price of $99.99. So, um, Get a comic book with that? And we'll throw in a comic book, The Adventures of Two Guys Quest for the Best Cigar. You're going to buy 12 for $99.99, 100 bucks. That is $8 and change a piece or something, yeah. so you're getting a discount. The question was, is there a box that comes in? No, it came in a box of two with a silver bar on it, and nobody can have the silver bars, and nobody can have uh, – we gave 250 silver bars away. Yes, I did save a handful myself so I could give my new employee, Barry, one of the silver bars. Uh, because he's a geek and he's into that kind of crap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with, with all with all due respect, parents. Okay, so, so I, took it. I don't know how fast or slow that these are going to sell, but I am going to put a limit on when this is going to end. So this will expire September 29th, 2015. It's three days from today. That's it. You got a short window here to buy the cigar you missed a golden opportunity there. is it limited two days quantities to one customer can one customer buy more than say one box of my father or more than one you can buy as pack? many you can buy as many boxes of <clears throat> my father i guess or or tatuaje as you want but I, um, what do you think? Well, it wasn't set up in the system right now for a limited quantity. So before Dave changes his mind, if you want to order five twelve packs, go ahead yes. and order five twelve packs. Because I couldn't just don't have be, two of these. Let, I'm going to say be debonair and don't be a pig. Yeah. Right? Let some people get them. Um, it is not, by all means, uh, infinite. There's not a ton, a ton of stuff. But there was a lot. And he, he was uh, very, very uh, giving when he did it. So uh, I would like them to buy the box of Tatuaje so that he gets something <coughs> from it. Um, I, I would hope that, that, that you know, if you're smoking Tatuaje, you love Tatuaje anyway, buy his regular line of Tatuaje and get the cigars for free. Uh, but there's, there's options there for everybody, right? Yes. So uh, as I get ready for Two Guys' 30th anniversary, um, uh, I want to publicly say thank you to Pepin Garcia, who will be at our anniversary party. Uh, he doesn't understand me anyway because he doesn't speak English. So somebody's saying it to him now, I hope. Uh, thank you to Pepin Garcia for five years ago for doing it. And Pete Johnson, uh, uh, obviously, um, five years ago, uh, six years ago for agreeing to do that. I can publicly say thank you now to them. And uh, I will say it um, when I see them both face to face on Wednesday night because they're going to be there. Um, that's it. That's all I have on that. I make gonna, it easy for people to find it. If you go to twoguyscigars.com, the very first image on the rotator, if you click that, it'll take you right to the page. That'll make it simple. Um, you don't have to poke around. There'll be links to go to, the, you know, the My Father products. There'll be links to order the two. There'll be links to order the, tw uh, the 12. It's easy. Just go to twoguyscigars.com and click that graphic. So if they just bought a box of My Father or Tatuaje, Something says that if they're getting it with it, or we just will give it with it. We will give it with it. I think Ed has it set up that it mentions it, but uh, Ed handled that aspect of okay. it because I wasn't as familiar with the software as he is. So don't worry about it. If you buy a box of My Father, Pepin Garcia, Tatuaje, Cabouan, you're automatically going to get it's automatic. Uh, it. Believe me, you'll get it. Um, and if you buy the 12-pack or you buy the two singles, uh, it's easy enough. But just in case that's not there, I want to let that know. So you got <coughs> till September 29th. On September 30th, that's our anniversary party. Our 25th is over. We're, we're all about the 30th anniversary at that point. If there's any cigars left at that point, maybe five years ago I'll do something with it. If there's none left, uh, actually, I'm going to make a point to grab a handful yeah, of my, myself <laughs> uh, because I have uh, none on, I have one cigar on hand extra for later uh, in case I wasn't being able to enjoy it while I was doing it, but I did and I will get back to the cigar. I'm going to exhaust uh, mine right now. Yeah. So what we're doing is taking the ash off the cigar because we're going to smoke the cigar later. I'm going to take all the ash off I can and tap it and get the ash out and actually blow out of it. Clearing the chamber. And when I relight that cigar, I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to toast the cigar up without putting the cigar in my mouth, toast it up, uh, spend a, a few seconds on it with my jet lighter and get it all happy, happy, and toasty. And then instead of drawing into the cigar as I light it and spin the cigar around, I'm actually going to be blowing out while I do it. 
It'll clean, clean, clean the chamber and not draw in the <coughs> ash taste. A lot of times when you relight a cigar and it tastes awful ashy to you, it does because you drew the ash in when you relight right. the cigar. So there's a little little trick um, not to do that. So uh, right now we're going to light up our second cigar of the day. God help them following a cigar like that. But uh, what do we have here? Well, today's second cigar is the Padilla La Pilar number no. 4, and it's made in Honduras at Tabacalera Aguilar, which is the same factory utilized by our friend Victor Vitali. It is also responsible for the original Padilla 68. The La Pilar No. 4 is available in three sizes, Robusto, Toro, and Churchill. And today we are smoking the 5x50 Robusto. It features an Ecuador Habano Oscuro wrapper over a binder from Nicaragua with filler from Jalapa and Esteli, which is located in Nicaragua, and in Dominican Republic. The MSRP is 550 All right, a little soft box press. It reminds me a little bit of the Potagus Number no. 4. No. Well, the band reminds me a lot of the uh, Hoya de Monterey Cuban band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, very Cuban-esque look to it. Soft box press, beautiful outside wrapper. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting is brought to you up by our friends at Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand that while all other cigar brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered their price, making them the best value in Honduras. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, in excellence. Nicaragua. Oh, yeah, Nicaragua. Best brand in Nicaragua. They might be the best brand, best value in Honduras, too. It could be. Yeah. <laughs> Real spicy on the cold draw. Real spicy. A little bit of sweetness, but mostly spicy. Yeah, just spicy good. and milky. Yeah. This looks like it's going to be a little powerhouse. We're going to see. Speaking of powerhouses, we are lighting with the powerhouse Vertigo Cyclone 2. At $14.99, this lighter features three jets, a big-ass tank, and an even bigger-ass adjustment wheel at the bottom. Both of those big-ass features patented by the folks at Vertigo, the Cyclone 2. And I would like to say this is undoubtedly, unquestionably, and nobody can even make an argument, and if you want to have a debate over it, I will. How is this not the best value cigar lighter on in the, the world? Planet. Right? I mean, you could save yourself a couple of bucks and go with the original Cyclone, but the tank is a little less big ass, and the adjustment on it is much less big ass. Yeah. That's an industry term, folks. You wouldn't understand. You wouldn't get it. But Vertigo is, hands down, the best value in the lighter business, period. Nothing even comes close. Not even close. And I will have the debate with anybody over it. The question is, how do they do it so cheap? Volume. <laughs> factory ownership. They own the factory. <laughs> Boom. They make the other ones for the other people and make profit doing that. They I'm going to be undebonair. Oh. Okay. You did an article in an editorial a long time ago how there's no original ideas left in the industry. Yeah. The box press is familiar of another brand. The band is familiar of another brand. Cigar lacks originality. Uh-oh. The the, the 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 packaging, the packaging yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the, the the appearance no I, it looked to me you know i'm i'm saying the the number 4 product is number 4 yeah, sure uh, and then you and you mentioned Hoy de Monterey mm -hmm. it's got that look to it um, you know it's familiar yes i'll tell you about Padilla cigars when we took on Padilla cigars many many years ago Padilla was the graphic designer for Perdomo cigars that was his original job in the industry. And then he went off and started his own company. And Padilla Cigars were launched. And we got behind Padilla Cigars. Uh, and the amazing thing about Padilla Cigars, not only were they, that they were a great cigar and are, are a great cigar, the amazing thing was people were coming in and buying Padilla Cigars and saying to me that they smoked them for years or that their father used to smoke the cigars. It just launched. It was brand new. And this was over and over and over. And I talked to people of Padilla cigars. Oh, I've been smoking them for years. And they were brand new. But they had the appearance that they were around for a long time. Sure. There was something to it that, listen, he's a graphic designer and he makes it look familiar. Sure. Even though it's new. Right. This is a new cigar and it looks familiar to me. Yes. There's, a, there's something to that. It's like having an old friend over. Yeah. When I left Miami, uh, I used to go to a cigar shop down there. Uh, cigar seller. They don't do mail order, so I'll mention them. Uh, but he came to my farewell party, and I still predict Padilla. 
funniest guy oh, ever yeah. met. He's yeah. hysterical. Yeah. He does impersonations of almost everybody in the industry, yeah. and they're spot on. Yeah. <laughs> that was uh, Tim Oslinger, too. He used to do it. It was funny. And I never heard him do me, but people have came to me and said, oh, my God, have you heard him do me? And I said, no. <laughs> and he says, oh, my God, it's crazy. And I said to him one day, do me. I heard you did, did it. No, 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 I don't do that. And I said, no, I, I said, I want to hear it. Don't worry about it. No, no, he would never do it. Oh, no <laughs> kidding. It was probably insulting or whatever, but I don't care. I mean, it's. So you're, you're, you're going on record and saying that Tim Osninger has never done you to you. Never, correct. Correct. Okay. That is correct. <clears throat> Something there for Old Fark Freddy. I'm just registering yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, back to uh, the 25th anniversary party. It's going to be this Wednesday. 30th. 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 Um, we have uh, everybody flying in. Um, it's going to be great. All all the different manufacturers. You don't see them a lot together. Listen, they're in competition with each other, and they don't like to do um, multi vendor uh, events, is what they call it, when uh, it's mixed up with different manufacturers. And maybe they send a rep to do a multi vendor event, but sure. certainly not the key person uh, to come up. And uh, thank you to all of them that continue to show up to do our multi vendor event. Um, and participating in a big, big way because it's a, I ask for a lot. I mean, if, you, if you're going to do it, the, the idea to try to make happen at these events is for it to be a win-win-win situation. And break-even is a win. If I end up having this event, and at the end of it, and we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to put the event on, at the end of it, I didn't lose a ton of money. Look at the promotion, the advertising value that it has to it. In the same way I try to look at the manufacturers, if you can get out of this at the end of this thing and get a lot of recognition and sell a lot of cigars because of it, and it ends up being a wash for you, please consider that in the thing. That's what I'm going to try to make end up happening, is that the people that are going to be there, and it's 500 people that will be there, that will be buying your cigar the next day. Will they go in and buy a cigar the next day? And we're going to tell you how that is going to happen next week because that's exactly what's supposed to happen. Yeah. That these people are going to come in the next day and start buying those brands that participated. This is my way of giving back. How this is going to turn out, who knows? We're going to end up seeing because there's a lot of moving parts to it, but it's an elimination night where people are eliminated during the night by teams, by brands, and then the last people at the end – have the choice of a guy could win a Mercedes Benz. The $30,000 could go to the audience, not to the guy. Uh, lots of different moving things that can happen. We don't know what's going to happen. We know how the game is played, but it's going to be all how people eliminate and what people end up choosing to do. Completely up to chance. Glenn Loop from Cigar Rights of America is coming up, and he's going to talk uh, to the crowd for just a minute or so and explain uh, because, you know, I know we talk during our show, and we have this Bad News Barry segment. People are like, oh, God, you need to know it, and I got 500 people there. Glenn, can you come up and... Say it to the 500 people I kind or something. I feel bad for Glenn because it's not like he gets to deliver good news all that often. Mm. Right? He is the bearer of bad news. I, he is the bad news Barry of the cigar world. Yes. And I, I got my fingers crossed that the FDA ruling that we expected to happen this week will not happen on Wednesday. Oh, mm. please. <laughs> Because if eight, it's going to happen, eight, eight of the manufacturers might commit suicide that yeah, day, and they'll be absent. Please, that's not that. That's what I'm going for. I'm starting to get a stiff neck. This is what happens to me when I get all nervous of things that can happen and all the stuff we've done. All our homework got got prepared as best we can, but things happen. You know, things happen, and that and that's the way it is. So uh, it's going to be an interesting event. We're going to tell you how it is, and uh, the day after we start planning for number thirty-one. The day after, because it takes that long to end up planning. Sometimes I've even planned and bought the prize in advance. Yes, you have. To, to do it, and I haven't, so I'm on the lookout for a special thing in my mind, and I'll tell you what that is uh, when we find it. So um, last week's Duran question and answer. What do you got, Barry Stein? Well, it's time for the question of the week, brought to you by Duran Cigars. When the question is asked, what are you smoking? The answer should be Duran. Duran Cigars combines the best quality tobacco fills from Nicaragua and Latin America with their super premium Habano Criollo Colorado wrapper. Experience the difference, Duran Cigars. Last week's question came from a Contact Us page, and it was, if you were going on vacation and you were to take 20 cigars with you, would they be all the same, 10 and 10, or 20 different? Well, 57% of you said you would take 20 different cigars, and only 4% of you 
said you would take a box. Wow. Which is very different than we see. Here. People do, yeah. right? People, the people do. They, they're going away. They buy a box. Why I would, would, would never want 20 different cigars is because, say, and I don't go on vacation, but I say I went on vacation and I was going to go sit by the pool or something. I'm going to take some cigars with me. I would want to have multiple of the same cigar so that if I'm sitting there and somebody came over and started talking to me and say, oh, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. it's either a cigar is either a deterrent mm -hmm. to make people go away or it's a magnet mm -hmm. and people that like it get drawn to it. So when people get drawn to it and they come over, oh, you're a cigar smoker, blah, 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 and the guy sits down, I can offer him the same cigar that I'm smoking. Not to mention buying by the box, you almost always get a discount. Yeah. So you're mm -hmm. going to buy the 20 cigars anyways, and you're going to end up giving them away. So you give away the free cigars, really, and you haven't paid anything. For yeah. the record, I, I would choose option D, none of the above. I would get a jar of <laughs> to go away with. <laughs> to go if away you're going with on it. vacation, Chuck. That's the way to that's, do it. Well, that's the home run, right? <clears throat> Incidentally, uh, we refer to jars around here as boxes. So, well, so the jar comes inside a box. Would that make him a jarhead? Yes. Yes. Oh, wouldn't that be a little little thing? I got something right there that you can join the club and become a jarhead if you buy a jar, and then we have a little dinner or something for the jarheads and before uh, this conversation gets any more ridiculous <laughs> barry what is the, this week's question well this week we ask with the fda regulations looming do you think the fda will make a significant impact on how the cigar industry does business uh we put out the question yesterday i'm not going to give the things but so far a lot of you need to wake up the question of the week was brought to you by Duran Cigars, and as always, you can vote on the CigarAuthority.com just above the Duran advertisement. When the question is asked, what are you smoking, the answer should be Duran Cigars. Experience the difference. You can take a box of Duran Cigars on vacation with you. There you go. Hey, the Alzheimer Burgundy, get away <laughs> cheap, too. Here we go. More money to drink on the beach. Yeah, we did a, a cigar school last night. And uh, after it was over, one of the guys went right downstairs and bought a box of Azan. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but boom, he learned what he learned. And he said, talk about value. Before talk about value. Cents. Yeah. Wow. It is a value. And a box discount on top of it. There we go. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty unbelievable. Um, next week, Nelson Alfonso will join us on the show. Uh, Nelson Alfonso was the owner of Atabay Byron Bandolero, along with the, uh, he is the mastermind behind all the uh, limited release Cuban cigars, including Bihique and uh, mm -hmm. different things like that. But he'll be uh, with us actually the night before. If you're interested or anywhere near the area of Salem, New Hampshire, and you want a special night, the night is called A Cigar with Nelson Alfonso at Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. Nelson Alfonso, the owner and founder of Selected Tobacco, that's his company, and the creator of Byron Bandolero and Atabay Cigars. This is Friday, October 2nd, 5.30 p.m. to 8 o'clock. Nelson will discuss his brands, Byron, Bandolero, and Atabay, the three centuries. We're going to actually smoke the Byron cigar along with them. So you're paying $25 to go. That's the exact cost of the cigar that it is. You're just going to buy a cigar and have the uh, smoke the cigar with him. Three centuries of Byron cigars, his family who launched it in the 1800s as we smoke along with him. The night includes a Byron cigar with Nelson Alfonso and some refreshments. Again, if you're anyway in, anywhere in the area, there are a handful of cigar, handful tickets, of left. tickets left. You have to buy in advance, twenty-five dollars. We wrote down thirty dollars a day of the day of. It doesn't look like it doesn't gonna look happen. like it's going to happen. I would say twenty-five dollars in advance and hurry up if you're interested in doing it. Um, Nelson's a wealth of information and a good guy. Have a cigar with Nelson Alfonso this Friday if you're anywhere in the in the area. And I know some of these manufacturers if they're if they're still around, they're going to want to sit in it. Yeah, because that's how it is when we were at the trade show, right? That's yes, it was. Uh, he's holding court each time, so uh, very interesting guy. Um, it's time to go into the aging room with our friend Old Fat Freddy. It's time to step into the aging room. Sometimes aging makes a great cigar even better, just like aging room cigars. They're made in small batches from rare and limited 100% Dominican tobaccos. And here in our aging room is Old Fart Freddy. Nowadays, people argue over gay marriage. In my day, everyone was either happily unmarried or unhappily married, but never happily married. 
Nowadays, there are TV shows like Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. In my day, if your eye was queer, you had something in it, and everyone wished they were Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis's favorite straight guy. Nowadays, if you don't have a cigarette in London, you may bum a fag. In my day, you would be considered a freeloader. Buy your own damn fag. We were non-fag bumming, Dean Martin wannabes that wish they had a gay marriage. Sometimes, aging makes a great cigar even better. Just like aging room cigars. Made in small batches from rare and limited 100% Dominican tobacco. Try aging room cigars from boutique blends. Some things are better aged. Some are not. I'm trying to light my fag, but my lighter has no gas. Anyone got a match? Happy with that? Yeah, that's not my best work. No? <laughs> <It's not. laughs> All right, Mr. Jonathan is going to put up an editorial. My very first. Your very first. So give it to us. All right. Where's the beef is my question. And I would like to preface this by saying that the uh, premise of my editorial is ridiculous. And I'm not suggesting the cigar world go in this direction, but it's just another option. In a world dominated by number ratings that have begun to mean little to nothing to the end user, why not change it up? From the master blender down to the rep, cigars are described as though they belong on the menu of a five-star restaurant on some exclusive island off the coast of it doesn't matter. Mm. <laughs> they get sexier and sexier from the press release to the final rendition of the band, and years go into the fermentation fermentation process. Then months into the blend, thousands are spent on artwork, band design, and printing. Then you have advertising, trade shows, and in-store events. Three to five years go by before the brand owner's 3 a.m. epiphany to the final release, and then after all the blood, sweat, tears, and life savings, the end result boils down to two digits. Cigars are sexy. Blending tobacco in third world countries escorted by armed guards is sexy. The thought of them being rolled on the thighs of scantily clad virgins is sexy. Numbers, on the other hand, completely suck. It's going to be tough, but stop thinking about those scantily clad virgins for a moment and think about the love affair men around the world have with their grills. Nothing in this world, virgins notwithstanding, is sexier to a man than slapping a two-inch thick $30 piece of meat on his grill and hearing it sizzle. There is no greater joy than grilling said slab of beef, beef to perfection and serving it to one's friends or family. I think you see where I'm going with this. Meat is sexy. <laughs> In every review, <laughs> you've been saving that. There we go. <laughs> In every review, we have tasting notes and food comparisons. So if we demand the dropping of number ratings, we could take the power back to quote Rage Against the Machine. Right now, according to the Cigar Authority polls, consumers are suspicious of ratings and believe them to be too high on average. Many smokers claim to have a number threshold. If it gets below a certain number, they won't try it uh, on cigars rated by their source of choice. Plus, the, by the looks of it, many of the top raters of cigars will not give their advertisers poor ratings for fear of losing them. Playing in quote, by the numbers, helps those who get good scores above a 90 and hurts everyone else 89 and lower. What if a cigar that you would have liked got an 83 and you bought it anyway? Through the power of suggestion, the 83 might take over your thoughts and in some way rob you of a portion of your enjoyment. I believe it. Remember, mm -hmm. this is a cigar that you would have <clears throat> liked had you smoked it before it was rated. Now you are going into this believing that in some way it is subpar and that is no way to go into anything new. If the reviewer, instead of giving a number rating, gave it a score of medium rare and followed that with tasting notes, would you be more or less inclined to enjoy this smoke than you, that you would have liked before its rating? The beautiful thing about comparing cigars to meat is that there is no bad choice. Some people like their steak well done and others on the rare side. I'm one of them. Plus, there is some crossover. You may like your filet rare and your flank medium. Giggity. <laughs> Using meat as a, the rating measure would make it possible for all manufacturers to have a fighting chance to reach their targeted market. Smokers that like their cigars rated rare would find exactly what they're looking for. I have not met anyone that only smokes cigars rated 92. Reviewing this new way would be more like classifying than rating, which yeah. could make it easier for the person writing the review. When evaluating someone else's creation, one needs to stay as objective as possible. To a certain degree, reviewers and crit critics are holding the future of that cigar in your hand and are corruptible by numerous factors. Did you pay for that cigar or did the brand 
owner or representative give it to you for free? Do you owe someone a favor? Are they an advertiser? If you become swayed by even one point for any reason, up or down, then none of your ratings should count. To be truly objective and connect with your audience on a new level, I recommend a new format. And I spell that out. Uh, raw would be not ready for market in the case of a pre-release sample. Uh, and perhaps a follow-up many, uh, many months later after it's ready. Uh, that said, some people like raw meat, so this is still not necessarily a bad thing. Rare would be mild as can be strength-wise, and the flavor separations are subtle. Medium rare, mild plus on the strength side, and so on. I go, I go through the whole thing. You're certainly welcome to read it. Uh, it will go up Monday at 10 a.m. Thank you. And, of course, there are other factors that a reviewer needs to address, like balance, complexity, aroma, and construction. But in the end, no numbers are given, and no one gets hurt if the manufacturer makes a cigar that performs as a cigar should. In the same way that meat eaters order their steak at a restaurant, they could be ordering their cigars from their local tobacconist. Very interesting. Very interesting. And I, I briefly talked about that when we got into how bad the rating system was. And um, you got the guys at um, Stogie Geeks that actually have Try, try One, yeah. Fiverr, um, Split a box. Yeah, a box split um, would kill Chuck Morrison for it, would fight Chuck Morrison for it. Be, you know, very interesting and a different way to do it. I like it. I don't I don't care for the, the number rating system, yeah. to be honest with you. And I, I rate cigars for Cigar Journal, and the, the last thing I end up doing is putting the number on, and I, I write the taste profiles and the different things and how it burned and all the things, and there's a lot. It's very <clears> complex of what right. they put you through. Uh, at the end, it's like... Oh, you know, I if I end up wanting to go to an 88 on it, I, I feel bad that it I'm putting a number to it and I'm not I don't really throw the high numbers out because I feel like a fair cigar. It's fair. It should be in the 70s. Yeah. It's fair. If it's really good, it should be in the 80s, which yeah. very good is in the in the high 80s. It has to be exceptional to get into the 90s if if that, that's the numbers as a, as a student sure that, that I dealt with and uh, for the, all the teachers that gave me the 60s and 50s and stuff what did they think of me right well, not, not much well and that's the thing is that uh, my my thesis is that you're essentially evaluating someone's creation you're you're evaluating art and how can you say that someone's art isn't good does it burn does it perform like a cigar if it doesn't burn properly and doesn't draw properly yeah you got an issue but other than that, just about every cigar that's in the shop could be classified as a certain style of cigar, and that was my thought. All right, so your thoughts on Padilla? Yeah. Not as strong as I thought it was going to be. I would give this a medium rare. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Right. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, it's not under-fermented, so it, it's well-aged. Tobacco is good and all that stuff. It's... Barry, of course, is, is going right off and saying it's not as strong as it is. I thought it would be. It's pretty full bodied for me. It's a little too full bodied. Would would that it's be a touch stronger than? Would that be medium well, too full bodied? Well, I don't know that the strength, strength necessarily would play in because you have. Yeah, I guess I'd have to look at my thing. Yeah. I just put I put that together because it's the, more of a strip than a fillet. The com <laughs> the comparison. There's an option. The cut ah, of meat. The cut there you of go. Meat. Come on, right? This is not a filet mignon. It's a New York strip, right? And nothing wrong with that, and 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 that then there is nothing wrong with that, and yeah. that's kind of that that's what the whole article was because you know it's easy to say, listen, let's not do numbers, but nobody is saying, okay, let's do it like this, right? And I wanted to have a way of doing it like this. All right. Do you have any taste profiles of the Padilla? This is the Padilla what? La, La Pilar. Pilar. Number four. Again, my apologies. My contacts are out of whack here. Basic. They, there's a they can't do it. They can't do it. There's a little bit of a little bit of spice, a little bit of sweetness. It's it's like a the flavors are muted. A pepper mm. tea. It's a pepper sweet tea. Mm. Why with sweet tea before you got it on your mind? That's what I'm tasting, man. That's what you got. All right, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, good news and bad news in the cigar industry. We got it all. Mr. Jonathan has the tweets of the week. Gentleman Chuck Morrison is live with us, and he's going to get debonair. We are live from Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Cigar Radio Network. Yeah. 
Savor this moment, the sparks of conversation, the anticipation of that first draw. Savor the story shared over a cigar like this, a cigar that makes this moment classic. Diavo Classic. Savor a composition of handcrafted Dominican leaf, graced with notes of 25-year-old tobacco. Richly complex, yet remarkably smooth. Savor a harmony of creamy, balanced flavors. A duet of two cigar virtuosos, jazz and cigar legend Avo Uvesi and master blender Hendrik Kellner. A cigar meant to be shared with friends old and new. The Avo Classic. Savor every note. Visit your local tobacconist or see the complete AVO line at avo.com. I'd like to file a missing persons report. I've lost my one true love. All right, what does she look like? She is like no other. Her skin, dark, simply gorgeous. Not slender, but firm to the touch. Well, we'll do everything we can for you, sir. The night we met over a fine scotch, it was love at first sight. Details, I need details, sir. Well, she's about five and a half inches tall. You mean five feet tall? No, inches. Oh, she's a mid, a dwarf, uh, a little person. No, she's a cigar. Ah, right, sir. Is she a Fleur de Lorraine cigar? The cigar that men around the world are falling in love with? Yes. Oh, I've seen this before. Louie! Yeah? Uh, get him a Fleur de Lorraine cigar and a list of United Cigar retailers to carry it. Fleur de Lorraine Cigars, simply gorgeous. Available only at appointed United Cigar retailers across the country. Fleur de Lorraine, stop missing out. Mr. Jonathan, a shadowed figure spinning tunes on records that do not exist. Mr. Jonathan. A young cigar smoker on a crusade to champion the oldies, top 40, and yes, even country, with a host of DJs that operate above the mix. Mr. Jonathan is my dance instructor. Mr. Jonathan is my DJ. Mr. Jonathan is me. Mr. Jonathan is my DJ.com. Your one-stop shop for everything DJ and sound production. Mr. Jonathan is my DJ.com. He reads the dictionary just for fun. He finds the minutia of tax preparation enthralling. Years ago, at an open mic night, he was paid just to leave. He is the only man to win a staring contest with the Statue of Liberty. He is so uninteresting to women, he was forced to open a cigar shop to sell to men. He's not even a legend in his own mind. He finds himself boring. His family barely pays attention to him, and his mother refers to him as, hey you, he is David Garofalo, the least interesting man in the cigar world. Not since Zeno Davidoff has a cigar retailer had a brand named after him. The man himself may be a bore, but the cigar isn't. Garofalo is a premium handmade luxury cigar using U.S. shade wrapper and a blend of Nicaraguan fillers and binder. Complex and very interesting. Garofalo may be the most interesting cigar in the world. It once won a longest ash contest without even being lit. You don't light a Garofalo, it lights you. Its flavor expands on your palate faster than the universe. It has been said that this cigar would be phenomenal as a Maduro, except it's perfect as it is. I always smoke cigars, and when I do, I prefer Garofalo. Keep smoking Garofalo, my friends. Hey, Jack, I finally found a cigar magazine that I like. Really? What's it called? Cigar Journal. What's so great about Cigar Journal? Is it really different from the other magazines? It is. Cigar Journal is all about cigars. None of the nonsense you see in other magazines. Really? Yeah, it has stories, reviews, and the latest news about premium cigars. Is it a little newsletter? No, I think you'll be very impressed. Cigar Journal has beautiful images, a thick cover, and is strictly for the cigar enthusiast. 
They cover cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. That sounds interesting. Where can I buy it? Cigar Journal is available at local cigar retailers and on the web at www.cigarjournal.co. That's cigarjournal.co. I'll sign up today. This is Hank Kellner and my son... Class Peter Kellner, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Cigars Retailers Radio Network. And we're back live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Studios. We got cigar news. We got a lot of it, good and bad. Also, uh, uh, tweets of the week. And uh, Chuck is here live, and he's going to get debonair with us. Welcome back, everybody, to The Cigar Authority. Let's get to it, Barry. Bad news, Barry. What's happening? Well, the city of Granville, Ohio, raised the smoking age to 21 this week. However, what sets the city apart from others is retailers who sell tobacco to a minor could be charged with a fourth-degree misdemeanor oh, and God. serve 30 days in jail, <laughs> while those under 21 caught with tobacco could be charged with an unclassified misdemeanor and be required to take a re-education class on smoking. Frank, can you can you imagine if we dealt with this stuff in Milford, New Hampshire? <laughs> Frank and I, are one of our audience members, served together on a board advisory committee, a budget committee, and uh, there's oh. there's people out there with machetes for God's sake. I mean, sex. really? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> which are which are legal to carry around in the state of New Hampshire? There we go. Sorry, Barry. What the? Astoria, yeah. Oregon, which is located 75 miles northwest of Portland, has banned smoking in parks. The Orange County Fair Board agreed Thursday to ban smoking at the annual summer fair and other fairground organized events. But perhaps the most telling event of the move was when Mike Robbins of Paradise Cigars stood up to protest the ban. He was told by the directors, this is not a debate. This is not Thanksgiving dinner. Wow. Yep. So much for free speech. Term wow. limits. Term limits. See ya. Yeah. In the state Senate of New York, a bill was proposed that will make it illegal to smoke with anyone in a vehicle under the age of 14. Uh, if passed, it'll carry a $100 fine. <laughs> Last week, we reported that Casper, Wyoming, was moving to repeal a smoking ban, and this week they changed course and opted to put it before a public vote. The public vote will cost the city $30,000 and is scheduled to happen within the next couple oh of months. My God. You take your kids out to dinner. You can drink during dinner. There's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Put the kids in the car after that's it. Mm -hmm. But it's ridiculous. Oh. It's the presidential budget for next year contains a raise in the s chip taxes. However, that budget is not yet official or has it been debated in the House or Senate. The FDA and the Department of Defense have joined forces in an attempt to stop smoking in the military via public service announcements directed at members of the armed forces. Yeah, do it to the poor guys in the military now, right? That's all and they have left. This week, That's all they have. This week, news came from FedEx that they will no longer be accepting tobacco shipments starting in 2016. What? This is huge. Yep. While the majority of manufacturers use UPS to move product to stores, this move will directly affect companies such as My Father, Tatuaje, and Illusioni, among others, who currently use FedEx to get their product to stores. Listen, Nick Perdomo gave a half a million dollars a year to FedEx. Mm. Uh, J.C. Newman, more than that. But more importantly, wow. it now opens the doors for other shipping comp companies to follow suit. And that's this or week's Or Yazag. Yazag. You know, if I'm another shipping company and I see FedEx, my competitor, doing that, Bring You're, the business to me. The opposite's going to happen. The opposite. They're going to all fall like dominoes. And, and here's, a uh, quick, here's a quick editorial uh, we already threw up there, if you haven't seen it on the thecigarauthority.com yet. Uh, are we seeing the beginning of the end of buying cigars online? FedEx Corporation is an American global carrier delivering services headquartered in Memphis, Tennessee. The FedEx early days, Federal Express, as it was called, their owner and founder, Fred Smith, took the company's last $5,000 to the Las Vegas blackjack table after he was denied a business loan and won $27,000. That's how FedEx became FedEx. In the first 26 months, the businessman racked up $27 million in losses, and Fred had to gamble. Desperate to pay bills, he took a trip to Vegas. Uh, and it paid off. It saved the company. I'll tell you his, this history because it appears FedEx is not taking any chances any longer. They are not willing to gamble. This could be the beginning of the end of mail order and, and online cigar sales, along with retailers getting the cigars themselves. How are we going to get them? FedEx 
is a corporation that's publicly traded, FDX, and it states that is, it is committed to produce superior financial returns for its shareholders and ships more than 10 million packages daily. Starting January 1st, 2016, FedEx will no longer ship packages containing any tobacco products, including premium cigars, to consumers and to retailers. You can't get them. Prohibited items allowed allows to be shipped via FedEx. Now, prohibited items, and I we got a letter from FedEx actually I, uh, clarifying this. I have this. it right here. The following message was submitted through the contact us page <laughs> of the CigarAuthority.com. Uh, this is from Jim McCluskey, who is the FedEx Corporate Communications Officer. This is on this story that I you wrote. You state in your current online publication that prohibited items allowed to be shipped via FedEx now include human corpses and live animals, <laughs> etc. If they are prohibited, how can they be shipped? The sentence needs to be corrected to say prohibited items include human corpses, live animals, and tobacco Thank products. you for the correction, please, FedEx. Please correct the arrows. He misspelled errors, just for the record. <laughs> Signed, Jim McCluskey. There we go. So prohibited items to be shipped via FedEx now include human corpse, corpses, live animals, and cigars. Another very odd one prohibited is postage stamps. Imagine you need a postage stamp to mail a letter or package via U.S. Postal, but you are not allowed to ship a package from FedEx that contains a postage stamp in it. Very I odd. found it very well, weird. That's weird because you have collect uh, collectors. Yeah, you can't do it. That's cool. So anyway, I digress from that anyway. Hazard materials are all right, and they can be shipped up to 100 pounds of black powder ammunition for explosives, but not a stamp and not a cigar. Illegal products, cigars, will soon be outlawed at FedEx. I'm talking about online retailers to consumers and even business to business. No longer can a cigar manufacturer ship to a cigar shop who sells the product. Uh, so what is happening? It makes you, makes you wonder. What I first noticed something was beginning to happen this year at the 2015 IPCPR trade show in New Orleans when manufacturers and Mr. Jonathan came over to me and said that he went to go ship the product yeah. back and they, they were asked if the package contains tobacco due to the restriction uh, prohibiting the shipment of tobacco and said, what? Why is it prohibited to ship tobacco? We are shipping tobacco to a tobacco store. I witnessed it myself, wow. and we thought, what was going on? It appears the reason stating was that they were getting ready to ban, um, and they had a lawsuit against them that FedEx was sued from the state of New York for $70 million. New York Attorney General filed a $70 million lawsuit last year against FedEx Corporation for unlawfully shipping ne nearly $80 million of contraband cigarettes to consumers. Okay, cigarettes to consumers. What the hell does that have to do with us shipping our product to ourselves? So uh, it, they said it violated federal and state laws. These cigarettes are contraband because they were sold into New York without New York getting the tax. It's all about money. Follow the money. Yeah. And the same thing happens every day. New York State believes they are entitled to damages from FedEx under the federal racketeering influ uh, influence and corporation and Corporate Organization Act, the RICO Act, of all things, that FedEx is now uh, going to correct that. Uh, what about cigars? Yes, this too, says FedEx. FedEx has made their financial decision and will not gamble. Remember, I told you that earlier. They will not gamble as their founder once did. FedEx has been subject to penalties for breaking the Federal Contraband Cigarette Trafficking Act and prevents all cigarette trafficking, the PACT Act, in the past. Despite these being cigarette-related, FedEx has decided to no longer accept shipments of tobacco products, including cigars, and this begins in less than 100 days. What's next? Who's next? The U.S. Postal Service has already been sued by New York also for shipping 80,000 uh, shipments of cigarettes untaxed. There has been rumblings about UPS wow. for the past two years concerning they are looking into this matter themselves. Are we looking at the end of mail order and internet cigar sales? It sounds like it. In the end, shipping cigars across state borders. 
how do we get our cigars that are imported from Nicaragua, Honduras, Dominican Republic, Costa Rica to us here in New Hampshire? Are we looking at the end of retail cigar sales as manufacturers will not be able to get their cigars to the retail shops? Will it go back to the days where truck deliveries of cigars to wholesale companies within that state and then those wholesalers feed the retail shops? I hate to bring it back in my day type of conversation here, but in my day when I started in the cigar business, that's how we got them. The cigars were shipped to wholesalers via truck from the manufacturer to the wholesaler, a large truck filled with the cigars, and then we were to buy from them. If this happens, and it already does in other countries, why not the U.S.? This is why uh, when I got into the cigar business in 85, we did not buy direct from the manufacturers. We got weekly de deliveries via trucks from ho wholesale companies who sold a whole array of items, including cigars, uh, but we sold face-to-face -to, -face to the consumer, and that's how we ended up doing it. As the FDA takes complete control over cigars, this rules will change for the cigar world, and it will not be as it is today. Put your seatbelts on and get ready to pick up your cigars at your local brick-and-mortar retailer because FedEx will not be delivering to them anymore, and others will follow. Are we seeing the beginning of the end of cigars online and cigars going directly from manufacturers to us retailers? I believe so. Which brings us to the only piece of good news that we have. Uh, last week, we reported that this week, the FDA regulations were going to come down, and they have not come down yet. That's all I have for good news <laughs> today. Just to, just to add to what you just read, yeah. um, Mo Barbecue, who um, is in our chat room, he's a regular. Okay. He tried to ship cigars through the Postal Service. And they were telling him at the post office it was illegal to send tobacco. Here and he comes. had to get a whole debate going before they finally let him ship it. It's unbelievable. It's Listen, because, it's because of the tax. They it's try, the yeah, but they, they're trying every way they can. And if we can't get the cigars, then they, they win. They're going to, every single way, they are so cunning. And now they figured out a way. We'll make it so that the retailer cannot get the cigars in the first place. That'll stop it. And again, it's based on cigarettes anyway, but we're lumped in yeah. like we're the same thing. The fight continues. This is a bad, bad thing that ended up happening. People don't realize how devastating this move is. Join the CRA. Just join the CRA. Cigarrights.org. That's it. There it is. There we go. Join. Um, all right. So that's it for good news. Uh, how do we de be debonair about that, Chuck oh, Morrison? Good While luck, you're Chuck. enjoying life to its fullest, it's important to be debonair. How to be more debonair and gentleman-like is gentleman Chuck Morrison. Do you need a gentleman? Gentleman. I'm a gentleman. Do you need a gentleman? <laughs> you wouldn't want to call me gentleman. Ladies, fasten your seatbelts. Switch on your electronic devices and pop up the valve. You need a gentleman? And this is The Gentleman's Way. It's brought to you by Debonair Cigars and Rum. Debonair Cigars provide its clients with suspension of reality. Time spent smoking a debonair can never be subtracted from one's life. Well, gentlemen, the upcoming presidential election is gaining momentum, but does that mean it's okay to talk politics in public? No. Look, I pay attention to what's going on in the world and very adamant about my views. However, it would be very rare for you to find out what my political party was or who I'm voting for in this upcoming election. Politics always begin arguments. Even if you and the person you're speaking with have similar views, not everybody has the same opinion. And this goes for many different topics. But for the same reason, uh, reason politics get everyone riled up. Your particular views are your particular views. No one can change that. But discussing them in public when you know that most likely everyone around you has a different opinion will result, and that is rude and not debonair. Donald Trump for president. <laughs> <laughs> That's the gentleman's way. It's brought to you by Debonair Cigars and Rum. The question always is, gentlemen, are you debonair? 
I would You're love crazy to, say, to vote for Trump. It's Rubio. Got to vote for Rubio. I would say uh, you're not supposed to be doing that. Right, not case on in that point. Debonair. And I'm going to tell you something else. Another one is is religion. We know that the Pope is right. in the United States right now, and I heard some rude comments from people, and I didn't say anything about it because they're going to rot in hell anyway. Right. So we know that's going to happen. The but, coverage, though, I mean, you have to follow is every waking moment. Forty five minutes just staring at the tarmac, oh. waiting for the plane to land. Ridiculous. I'm with you. Okay, we're going to get to take a peek in the asylum, but first I'm going to go through quickly uh, the Cigar Authority calendar of events. Next week, we have Nelson Alfonso from Byron Cigars. He'll be here at, uh, at Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire, if you want to come by and say hi, and we're going to talk to him about uh, all his different cigar brands. He'll be in here with us live. The following week, October 10th, Nick Malillo from El Well. El well, when say cigars, Foundation Cigar Company will join us live in studio also. That's October 10th. The following week is October 17th. Avo Synchro brand manager Scott Colossier joins us. Moving ahead, um, we have a cartel event on November 7th. Unfortunately, not open to the public. It is open just from the people from Cigar Cartel. This is a group on Facebook, I believe, yes, right? Yes, it is. That is correct. And um, with, with us will be Steve Saka. And his Coba Mesa? Co Sober Mesa. Sober Mesa. Sober Mesa cigar. Dunbarton to Tobacco and Trust. He'll be with them. And unfortunately, we have no studio audience for there because they actually uh, rented out the place to end up doing that. So uh, lots going on in the Cigar Authority. Uh, watch for it right now. It is time to take a peek into the asylum uh, with our friends from Asylum Cigars. They're coming to take me away, ha-ha. They're coming to take me away, ho-ho, hee-hee, ha-ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats. And they're coming to take me away, ha-ha. It's time for news from the Insane Asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true, or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars, Take No Prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied, Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80. That's right, that's Asylum. Everyone listening has heard of the five-second rule, but to stay safe, you really should consider doubling it. Gabby Scanlon went to a local bar to celebrate her birthday with some friends. The bartender, hearing that it was her birthday, poured her not one but two shots of nitrogen-infused Jägermeister. Immediately after consuming the second drink, she became violently ill, started vomiting, and smoke soon poured from her nose and mouth. Yeah. As the liquid, liquid nitrogen hit her stomach, it began giving her internal organs frostbite, resulting in an emergency surgery to remove her stomach completely. Oh, my God. That's insane. But you know what? It's not a bad choice for dieting. Yeah. That's asylum. Coming to take That's how to lose away. some weight the hard way. The hard way. Okay, before we get to the tweets of the week, what is our thought here on this Padilla? I started to pick up some flavors of marshmallows. Yeah, yeah, the sweetness to it. There is some sweetness for sure. La Palar. Like, you don't chew the marshmallow. You take as many as you possibly can, <laughs> and you mush them into your mouth, and you have just that marshmallow flowery thing, and as it starts to get wet, there's a certain sweetness that's different than chewing the marshmallow. I think you, you were saying it wasn't as strong as you thought it was, and early on, I thought it was very strong, but it mellowed out. Yeah. Mellowed out for me, which is which made it better. And it's the regular size marshmallow. A little early, it's aggressive. not the mini ones, and it's not the different colored ones. That Did you say bad. Honduran? Uh, yes, Honduras. Which Honduran tobacco to me is early aggressive most of the time. Well, it's made in Honduras, but it doesn't have any Honduran it tobacco doesn't. in it. No. Okay. Well, there goes that theory. <laughs> that theory's out the let me, window. Let me get this foot out of your mouth. There you go. <laughs> Pull that out. All right, best <clears throat> tweets of the week brought to you by Recluse Cigars. It's time for the social media segment brought to you by Recluse Cigars, the cigars that were built on social media. All Recluse Cigars go through eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years to guarantee you balanced flavor. Try a Recluse Cigar today. And uh, this week, our tweet segment is inspired by the great man of baseball, Yogi Berra. 
Awesome. Since his quotes took over my Twitter feed, I'm going to read the best ones that I saw this week. When you come to a fork in the road, take it. Absolutely. You can observe a lot just by watching. Baseball is 90% mental and the other half is physical. <laughs> See, the math doesn't work out on that. <laughs> the future ain't what it used to be. And the best yoga... Be Yogi Berra tweet I saw and all week. And by the week. way, Yogi Beer, named after Yogi Berra. Uh-huh. Really? True. Always go to other people's funerals, otherwise they won't come to yours. <laughs> <laughs> Today's social media segment was brought to you by Recluse Cigars Rolled N2 Bar, the old Cuban way for an effortless and perfect draw every time. And the folks from Recluse will be here Wednesday. I'll tell you, that Armadeus, and I'm getting comments from... Uh, from people that are smoking Amadeus it. Habano. That is fantastic. Absolutely. And I think yeah. it is the best cigar that they've made to date. And I generally like all of their stuff. But that one, that one's amazing. They got it going on. Okay, yeah. final thoughts on the Padilla? Marshmallow? Marshmallow. A little sweetness. A lot of earth. A little spice to it. Yeah. So you're thinking dirty marshmallow? Dirty marshmallow. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't sound good. Not to be Sounds confused like with a, the Dirty Sanchez. That's, you know, a different, no. that's a different ball game Giggity. altogether. Giggity. Next week, he is the creative genius behind many of the Cuban cigar brands. He designed and developed Cohiba Bihique along with many others, but he will be talking about his cigars, particularly the oldest cigar brand we have in the shop. It's called Byron. It's been around for three centuries, and it's his family legacy. Next week, right here, live on the Cigar Authority. Until then, you've been listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Cigar Radio Network. And when you happen to be smoking your Padilla La Pilar Robusto, always remember, remember four. keep the lid end out of your mouth. Take a trip into another world. CAO Columbia. The newest addition to CAO's World Blends is a delicious addition to the CAO collection. It's the first cigar to prominently feature Colombian tobacco and is a mild to medium bodied blend boasting notes of toasted nuts sprinkled with briny nuances. Using a tobacco from the isolated mountainous region of Colombia, the Aiku Mazinga tobacco is a unique and rare find that provides a smoking experience won't forget. For a savory smoke that takes you to another world, visit CAO Columbia. Yeah, you want to know what Lenny Clark has to say about two guys smoke shop? Two guys, the two guys smoke shops, guys are the nicest guys. And I'll tell you, sometimes you go into a cigar store, you really don't know what you're looking for. It's very intimidating. And a lot of times people have a tendency to be arrogant with you, like they know it all. Not those guys. Hey, what? The guys up at the two guys smoke shop. If you're a first time smoker or you're looking for a great, go in and see them. They'll put you at ease. They'll make you feel at home. They'll get you the best cigar you can get for the best deal. You can't beat it. And then whenever I'm in New Hampshire again, if I'm in high speed police chase or something, I'll stop in and have a smoke with those two guys. Why, thank you, Lenny Clark. As a man, no way.